Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Asa Tarot and in today's pick a deck, stone, pile, card, whatever you want to call it reading, we're switching it up today. So what my intentions for today's reading are, are to just see what somebody is thinking of you, whether it is in general or in this current moment. This is a timeless reading, so whenever you come upon it uh, is when it's right for you. Now, don't get overwhelmed by the amount of piles. That is not the point of readings like this. Um, I wanted to give you the opportunity to ask about anyone. So family, friends, um, it could be romantic interests, literally anybody. Um, I didn't, coworkers, bosses, peers, literally like anything. Um, because I saw too, a lot of you guys were asking uh, to do friendship readings, which we can totally do, but a lot of friendship readings can kind of go hand in hand with readings like this. So I figured this would be a good way to add them all together. So essentially what we're just doing today is um, when you pick a pile, I'm first going to read the energy of the person that I am channeling. So if that sounds like a person in your life, um, that reading is for you. If it does not, then it is not for you. Uh, you may find that um, if you feel drawn to like one of them or you're not asking about a specific person, but you're still drawn to this reading, then I would take that as spirit giving letting you know that that you're on this person's mind but if you had like multiple people that you wanted to ask about for example um ranging from romantic interests to co-workers or family members or whatever it may be i wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of do that all in one place so we have six piles to choose from today and i will be using that deck to see what they think about you so starting with pile one we have the way of the panda tarot and this blue chalcedony butterfly i hope i'm saying that right and then for pile two we have the intuitive night goddess tarot and then we have this little Dalmatian Jasper Palm Stone. And then for Pile 3, we have the Wildwood Tarot, as well as this Rutilated Quartz Angel. And then for Pile 4, we have uh, the Santa Muerte Tarot and this Larimar Shell. For Pile 5, we have the Five Cent Tarot, as well as this Fluorite Snowflake. And then finally, for Pile 6, we have the Star Power Tarot and this light heart so like I said earlier do not stress yourself out uh, trying to pick a pile in the beginning of each reading we will be channeling the energy of the person that is thinking about you so that will be your way to confirm if it's your pile or not I don't have this many piles to overwhelm you and stress you out I have this many piles here to give you the opportunity to um, I don't want to say kill two birds with one stone, hug two birds with one stone. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I also quickly wanted to mention as well, um, I'm probably not going to do January 2020 predictions or um, love predictions for 2022. There are already tons of readers that have done them and truthfully I just don't really have the energy to do it right now and I feel like by the time I will the, the time will have passed so um, if you are really curious about those topics I would go and support another reader um, one that you like I obviously I would highly recommend Kino um, Hermit Tarot uh, Gem Goddess there's lots of different people that uh, you can check out um, Chloe Taylor uh like tons of people so um yeah go support other readers search for those readings and and check that out on your own because i don't know i just feel like doing this right now so <laughs> uh once you have picked your pile or piles you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box where i will have all the timestamps listed for each pile below and then once you have picked your pile or piles i will see you in your reading 
Hi there, pile one. If you guys chose the blue chalcedony butterfly, this is going to be your reading. Thank you so much for being here. Before we get into the tarot, we have to see who we are channeling. So I do want to remind you that when we are channeling from somebody else's perspective, um, what comes through may not necessarily be the objective truth. It's just what they're perceiving from their subjective reality. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start and see who this person is. So to start, we have the mirror. We have, I forgive myself for feeling as though I need others to be for me what I must first be for myself. I choose to believe that I'm fully capable of providing myself with all that I need as long as I clarify my desires and commit and commit to be guided there as life sees fit. Um, we have discernment. The frequency of discernment supports our ability to view the world and the people around us from a place of inner balance and detachment, yet with compassion and wisdom. We also have Baba Yaga with authenticity. We have Cancer with I feel. And finally, we have Nuada with perfection. I might be saying that wrong, but I... <laughs> There's no other way to say it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll see myself out for that one. Okay, so this is an excellent example of an energy that I'm feeling where it could be stemming from tons of different people. And it's going to depend for each of you who you're asking about who this person is. Um, but the energy that I'm picking up on, the vibe that I'm getting is that it's definitely somebody close to you. This is a significant connection in some way. I would say that this, for some of you, this could be a mother or a motherly figure. Um, this could even like, and when I say motherly figure, like they could be your uncle, but if they have like a motherly energy attached to them, like they could just be your friend, somebody with a motherly energy attached to them or um, a lover of some kind. A lover or a friend that you share like a very close bond with this is somebody that mirrors you and for some of you I honestly I, I might be beating spirit to the punch but for some of you this may be yourself um, with the mirror here so as I channel this energy just be aware of it like there could be tons of different combos here but let's go ahead and start with the mirror because I definitely think that this person whoever they are plays a very significant role in your life. And I definitely don't think it's always sunshines and rainbows with this person, but I do think that your connection has transformed over time, especially with you choosing uh, this deck with butterflies and the blue chalcedony butterfly. I definitely think that this connection has been through a transformation of some kind, or it's one that's constantly transforming. Um, especially if it's a, a family connection that, that evolves over time. But uh, from what I can see here, this person, um, they have very strong feelings for you. But I, I feel like they keep them repressed. Uh, the fact that we have Nuada here with perfection, this is all about, you know, being a perfectionist, but also um, not maybe not necessarily realizing how we may be unnecessarily hard on ourselves or feel like we have to show up in certain ways or we have to fulfill an image in our head that we deem to be perfect. Um, the story about Nuada actually, uh, he was the king of Aaron, um, which Aaron could be a significant name, but um, I guess one rule in this time it was like during the Celtic time, so you could have Celtic ancestry as well, um, or this person could have Celtic ancestry um, or Slavic, because that's Baba Yaga is um, from Slavic. I believe it's she's a Slavic. Um, she comes from Slavic culture, but anyway, uh, Nuada lost his hand uh, fighting in a bloody war, and he was. And I guess there was this dumbass rule way back when that in order to be king, you had to be fully put together. And because he didn't have one of his hands, they were like, sorry, bro, like, can't be king anymore or at all. Um, and then they had someone else be king and that had two hands and 
he fucking sucked. So um, they were like, yo, Noato, we're sorry. We're going to give you this silver hand. Uh, can you please be king? And it kind of, that story kind of talks about how, like, Nuada was fit to rule in the first place. He was very benevolent, very wise, very generous. This person could have those qualities as well. Um, but they may beat themselves up over something that that they don't have or that they um, wish they had that doesn't even impact their ability to be a good presence in your life. Um, I feel like this person holds themselves to unnecessarily high standards. And I definitely think that they feel a very close bond to you. With this cancer energy, they could have some kind of cancer placements, um, but they certainly don't have to. I do think that this person, while they feel intensely, they don't necessarily show how they're feeling. Um, and I think that this stems from the fact that they have kind of conflicting energies within them because when we go over here and we look at um, Baba Yaga and discernment, this person has a desire to be more authentic with you or to share more of themselves with you, but it's kind of like their um, protective mechanisms won't really allow that to shine through. And in fact, um, maybe this person, like, it, it, like it, maybe it sounds like yourself, but it actually is somebody where you mirror that energy. But the vibe that I'm getting is that this person, um, they feel a deep bond to you, a deep bond with you in some way. But I, I don't think that they necessarily feel safe enough to be their truest self around you. I think they're working on it, but I think it, it really has nothing to do with you, their lack of like sharing themselves, sharing who they are with you. Um, you are right if you do think that this person like tries to put up a front, tries to always be really polished, put together, um, and look like they have it all figured out. Um, if this is like a motherly figure or something like that, I think that that's just a natural response to being, you know, if they are your parent, your parent. Um, they don't want you to see their perceived flaws or their perceived um, shortcomings but this person really cares about you and I think they care about what you think of them and they judge themselves very harshly so it's hard for them to kind of show up and be fully authentic because because of the fact that they judge themselves and like a lot of aspects of themselves. So if they showed you those, they don't they don't know necessarily what your response would be. They're not yet they're they're learning how to discern um when it's safe to be themselves and be open and be vulnerable. But they're kind of going through these life lessons right now where they're learning that being themselves is better than trying to fit some perfect image that you that this person never needed to conform to in the first place. Um I think that you and this person see yourselves in one another and I think that you both kind of match each other's energies. So like if you both, so maybe you both show up in this very like, I'm, I'm great. I, I'm all put together. There's nothing wrong. Like, you know, like spirit just put in my head the, the meme of the dog that's sitting in the house that's on fire. And he's like, he's just like, this is fine. Um, I feel like that's kind of both of your energies a little bit. I feel like you both are very good at um, keeping these these fronts up, like everything's just fine. Um, but underneath this, I think that this person is having, I don't think an identity crisis, but more so um, a prolonged ego death where they're like, where their feelings for you are somehow showing them where they don't show up in authentic ways around you. And so I think that they are learning a lot about how to be maybe more <laughs> reflective when it comes to themselves. And, and I think that they are looking at maybe wounds that you both mirror or um, wanting to maybe be more open with you. With this victim card being here, I do think that this person has a bit of a victim mentality in the sense that I think they're still learning to to stand in their power and to be empowered. Um, I feel like this person wants to be themselves around you, but if you both are mirroring this like perfectionist energy, then I think that this person doesn't feel safe to be 
authentic first because in this card it says I forgive myself for feeling as though I need others to be for me what I must first be for myself so it's like this this person seems to have this passive energy of um not not feeling safe enough to set set a vibe or set the tone of something but rather allow that tone to be set so maybe both of you are like avoidant or or both of you are like maybe more passive and and kind of both in this hesitant energy and so i think that you know maybe both of you are kind of learning this lesson right now to stand in your power a little bit more and and not be afraid to be imperfect and to be yourselves this new auto card also talks about the fact that like there's perfection in your flaws and like in how you were created and that you don't need to hold yourself to some unrealistic standard that can never be attained or reachable um so this person definitely has this dual energy but no matter what the type of person that i'm about to channel is somebody that you are close to in some way and it's it's kind of ironic because for some of you maybe you don't interact with this person often but your souls feel bonded to one another if that makes sense um but yeah that is the vibe that i'm getting so if that sounds like a person that you're asking about let's go ahead and see what they think of you so you guys picked the way of the panda tarot which is one of my favorite decks I, I can't even say that i have a favorite deck because i just i just like so many of them even the ones that annoy me because they have different names i just they're all art in their own way but this one is exceptionally cute so maybe you think this person is really cute or they think you're really cute or vice versa um pandas could be a significant animal um or sign for the both of you But no matter what, I think that this person um, has a hard time, like, like they, I feel like sometimes they're almost too proud to admit their vulnerabilities, but like, it kind of screws them over because they have these kind of intense vulnerabilities that are not being addressed. And so it, they're kind of doing this push-pull thing with the universe where like, the universe creates opportunities for this person to see where their vulnerabilities are and and where maybe they could be more open and authentic but it's up to up to that individual person to actually like take those opportunities you know what i mean yeah let's do one more since that one wasn't very good that one wasn't very good either but i, I can live with that so okay spirit what does um Kyle one's person and when I say your person it's just the person that's being channeled so what does this person think of pile one spirit okay we have the six of wands in reverse what does this person think of pile one we have the world we have the page of swords I just heard like I'm still learning I'm still growing we have temperance in reverse. We have the king of swords upright. Okay, can we clarify these? So we have strength. I'm gonna move these down a little bit. Take them downtown. Okay, can we clarify the world please, Spirit? Can we clarify the world? Okay, we have the Five of Pentacles in reverse. The Page of Swords, we have the Eight of Cups in reverse. With Temperance in reverse, we have the Three of Swords upright. And finally, Spirit King of Swords. The Hanged panda in reverse and on the back of the deck we have the eight of pentacles okay so how does this person what does this person think of you well starting with the six of wands i definitely think that this person feels like something about your connection is 
um, unsuccessful or not where they want it to be. Like they're feeling a bit defeated about where where you both are at right now or maybe defeated in terms of like their ability to show up. But when with it being clarified by strength, I think that this person recognizes that your connection is stronger than um, then these like minor blockages, minor um, things that get in the way. And I think that this person is learning how to be more compassionate towards themselves. If you're very supportive of this person, one thing that they, that they think of you is that um, they really admire you in the sense of your strength, in the sense of how, how much you're willing to overcome, how far you're willing to go to succeed. Um, and the fact that when you get knocked down, you get back up again, even if it's really difficult. I think that this person thinks the world of you in the sense that like you just expand their awareness every time you're around them. Uh, but with the world, I also think of fixed energies. And I think that there is um, an element of your connection that, that is sort of fixed. So this fixed element, for example, could be like, you know, a, like I use parent child just because that is like a, a fixed way that souls would be bonded in a lifetime, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, it could be two besties. It could be, um, two lovers, uh, two souls tied in one way or another. Um, and truthfully too, like maybe you both are living at a distance from one another. And I feel like this person doesn't really tell you how much they miss you sometimes. And if, um, you used to like live close to each other and you don't anymore. I think that this person doesn't tell you this, but thinks about the fact that they they took you for granted when you were around them. And they're, I feel like sometimes they're too proud to admit that they miss you, mainly because maybe you went off on your own journey or maybe you went off to do your own thing or maybe this person did. And I feel like they reflect on a cycle that you both went through together. Um, and this could have been a cycle where maybe you both were in a, a hard place financially, or you were just in a difficult place in general. It doesn't have to be financially. It could just be like, um, maybe you wonder both of you is really struggling. I, I did just hear like sickness. So it could have been an illness of some kind. But they are incredibly grateful for all of their experiences with you. And it really it really makes sense. I'm really I'm I'm focusing on this page of swords and this king of swords because there's a lot of different energies that I'm getting for this. And I do just have to channel this from the perspective of a mother real quick, and then I'll get back to other, other interpretations of this. But um, if you're asking about your mother or somebody who raised you that you think of as a mother, um, they're reflecting on how you started on your journey versus where you are now. And I think that they beat themselves up a little bit for not being there enough for you. Um, like I keep hearing that they weren't patient enough, that they didn't, they didn't take enough time. It's like they didn't appreciate your presence while they, they had you. Um, it's like they couldn't get over their own emotional issues to be there to support you. Like, especially if you were like a bookworm or something, or if you were just, you were the type of child to just kind of be off on your own a lot, doing your own thing. Um, I feel like this parent figure really regrets um, not, not spending more time with you. It's like they didn't dream of the day when you would be gone and and now that you are it's 
they they have so much more awareness about how they didn't fully appreciate the experiences they could have had when they had them. With the Eight of Pentacles here, um, I think they're very proud of you. Like you're a hard worker and they know that, but they they see you turning into them and they don't like it. Um, I think that if, if the parent thing resonates, um, I really see this as like, it's almost like they're passing down like workaholic habits or um, very rational, closed off um, ways of perceiving the world. And they can see how you taking on their way of seeing the world has also worn you down. And I think that um, this parental figure holds a lot of regret for maybe not having a more balanced presence in your life, not being there more often. Um, but parental figures aside, no matter who this is, there is a sense of regret here. Like this person wasn't patient enough to see things through or this person I, there's something also about maybe trying to grow up too quickly like this person sees you and they're like maybe if you evolved really quickly or you've been working really hard I think this person is really impressed by what you've been able to cultivate but it seems to be at the expense of your innocence and your youth and I think that makes this person sad because like for some of you, if you're really successful now, I think this person thinks back to, to before that time and when you were less sure of yourself, when you were not as confident in yourself, but at that time you were still, the best parts of you shown, shown through, like your compassion, um, your strength, your your character, things like that. And I think that they've seen how the weight of the world has just kind of beaten you up a little bit. And I think that this person feels bad that they didn't give you more time. Like, it, it, it feels like for some of you, this person disappeared for, like, a point of time. Um, or you disappeared for a point of time. And then it's like, and, like, they weren't anticipating you disappearing. And so then when you came back and you were just different, it kind of threw this person for a loop. Because they were like, whoa, like, I wish I could have impacted them in more positive ways or I wish I could have been there for them more because there's things that if you've known this person since childhood or for a decent chunk of time long enough for you both to grow and evolve if there's things that happened in your past whether it be like romantic or whether it be like two friends that um drifted apart or um had some difficulties with one another they they feel like there's unfinished business between you like there's things that you need to address and talk about but this person is realizing that they can't force anything they can't force a situation to happen between the two of you. Um, with the temperance and with temperance in reverse and the three of swords upright, I feel like this person thinks that if they try to make things happen, they just end up getting hurt. And I I think that that does kind of stem from their fear of putting themselves out there. Um, and I think that this person buries themselves in their work, kind of similarly the, to the way you do to kind of um, keep their keep their their thoughts off of you and it, and it's not even like their thoughts of you it's like they're they're I feel some guilt like in some sort of way and I don't know if this guilt is justified or not um it may be for some of you and maybe not for others but I do think that this person sees you now and sees kind of parts of you that they've seen you mature and they're very impressed by that 
but I think that they, uh, I think that they almost wish you wouldn't have grown up so quickly and evolved so quickly because it's almost like this person, if you haven't talked to them in a while, then I would say that this person doesn't know how they'll <laughs> match up with you. Uh, the reason why I'm laughing is I just heard it in my head, <laughs> which <laughs> gotta bring them out here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that vine that's like, you know, good duck, you just like your father. And I just heard that and it made me laugh. Um, so I guess Christmas duck wants to hang out. So maybe ducks are significant in some way. But this person definitely like thinks of you in bittersweet ways. Like, because I, I, before I said bittersweet, I wanted to say fondly. But then there's also like pain because they either have regrets for how they treated you, regrets for what they didn't do, regrets for what they didn't say, or regrets for not being aware of what they know now. Um, and I feel like if they want to work on your connection, whatever type of connection it may be. They want it to be strong. And I think that, that one thing they're realizing is that they can't be fully authentic with you um, if, they're, if they are staying in their King of Swords energy as well, which would be very detached, cool, logical. And with the hanged panda in reverse, <laughs> I always forget, um, this panda just looks like it's eating ass to me and I just think it's funny. Um, but with the hanged panda here, I really think that this person is realizing that like, they're going to have to put actual effort in to be straight up. And I don't know if they're willing to do that yet. Like there's, there's resistance to being open to what they feel because they're afraid of what they feel. I think that they, um, they're pretty analytical when it comes to their emotions. And I think they think about the fact that like, they don't feel safe enough to, to be upfront and honest with you because of, about their feelings, because they're either afraid of pain or they're afraid of what you'll say, or they're afraid of more pain. But I do think that they, I just heard in my head, like, wish we could turn back time. Um, but I do think they're trying to... This is kind of weird, but regress to pro progress. Because what I think that this person is, is doing is, like, they're almost retracing their steps to kind of go back to an energy that you both um, existed within in your connection or that this person existed in within your connection and use that use that previous perspective compounded with the present awareness that they have now to almost like change things in a way that progresses both their own personal development and this connection but um how they will go about this I'm not sure I don't even know if they will because this is just their thoughts um but this person misses you um even if they just talked to you yesterday like I think that this person misses like misses or wishes because for some of you maybe it's you've never been really open and intimate and honest with this person or not intimate in like a weird way but like well I mean there's nothing weird about being intimate why would I even yeah maybe you both struggle with like being vulnerable and like being close um like the hedgehogs dilemma you know like if hedgehogs are trying to keep each other warm and they get close they're gonna hurt each other with their spikes it's kind of like an analogy for a uh, human human connection like the closer you get to somebody the more that 
you'll just hurt each other. So you have to find a, a healthy balance of where you can be intimate and close, but at the same time still protect protect yourselves from pain. But yeah, overall, the way that this person thinks of you is I, I think that they just, they reflect on a lot of memories or they um, reflect on what they've done wrong or reflect on what the good times. It's kind of like re reminiscing energy, but also like future hopes mixed with a dash of shame for their past and um, angst and guilt is like what I'm what I'm hearing. So this reading was meant to be shorter, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with some advice. I know this is kind of weird for me, but um, I literally just wanted to do like what they think of you and finish off with some advice. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna get you some advice from spirit. It may have to do with the situation, it may not, but, uh, and as I was thinking of this card, it just popped up, forgive, whether in person or in your mind, forgive and move forward. The only person you're hurting by holding on to resentment is yourself. Um, so maybe there's some forgiveness that needs to happen here, uh, but let's see, spirit, what advice would you give to pile one at this time? What do they need to hear? heal allow yourself to heal be kind to yourself right now yeah i think that's incredibly important what else empathize instead of judging go or gossiping empathize with this person try to see their point of view choose to only see through love and finally we have focus remain completely focused on exactly what you want the best is yet to come and on the back of the deck we have self-love it's time to fall in love with yourself you come first so yeah if 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 this reading just sounds like yourself i think spirit is really encouraging you to focus on some self-love lucky for you i just posted a big boy reading on self-love so if you haven't checked that out yet feel free to um but yeah i'm gonna leave this reading here pile one thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for watching my ads that is the simplest and easiest way to support me but if you would like to support me in other ways you can uh check out extendeds on other readings you can check out my social media just do be aware that there are a lot of scammers pretending to be me um i think they're even on facebook now i'm, I'm not on facebook so no that's not me uh, if it's not linked below, it's not mine. Just point blank period. Um, definitely if this resonated, leave me a like, comment down below. Let me know how it resonates. Subscribe if you want to. Click that little notification bell if you haven't already. Um, thank you guys so much for letting me read your cards. It feels so weird not doing this for like a super long time, but I'm trying to get myself in the habit of just doing different shit so I don't get stuck in, in one type of cycle of doing things because that sucks the fun out of it for me so um i hope that this resonated i hope that you enjoyed it um i really hope that you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and i hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye hi there pile two if you guys chose the dalmatian jasper stone and the intuitive night goddess tarot this is going to be your reading thank you so much for being here so to make sure this reading will actually resonate I want to see who I am channeling first, so even if this isn't the person that you were asking about, even if they uh, sound like someone you know, you may want to stick around, but if you hear the energy and you're like, yeah, I don't care, I'm not interested, eh, you can move on. But um, I did also just want to mention and remind you that when we're channeling from somebody else's perspective, um, that doesn't mean that their perspective is the truth, It's or the objective truth. It just means how they are perceiving things from their subjective perspective. So let's go ahead and start. So to start, we have the offering and we have, I forgive myself for attaching meaning to the experience of aloneness. It is through accepting solitude and connecting with myself in my own silence that I'm able to meet and integrate aspects of my being that I have long been resistant to. We have the fire element with desire and i might say this wrong i think it's hermes but i also just want to be like hermes because it's more fun to say it that way and obviously i'm thinking of purses and shit. um we also have divine feminine 
the frequency of divine feminine supports our receptive nurturing and soft side allowing it to express itself openly and helping us to connect to our intrinsic understanding of our connection to all creation and finally we have freya with irresistibility so this is definitely one pile where it's a bit harder to place it under a ton of different categories. I would definitely say that this is a romantic interest. Um, if not one of yours, then somebody that at least is romantically interested in you. For some of you, this could be somebody new. And for others, this could be somebody that you have history with. Um, but the vibe that I'm getting from this person, no matter um, the length of your connection and how you know them, uh, I think that this person, well, one, has is has like feelings for you, <laughs> just straight up. Um, but I think I think that they are in your present moment. If not, they're trying to be. Um, they want to be in your present. Um, I think it's likely that you're communicating with them or that they're showing interest of some kind or at the very least popping up and like coming up on your radar um and I, I sense this kind of hesitancy on your end like you don't know if this person because like you could be really attracted to this person or find them to be irresistible or maybe maybe if you don't lots of people do um or they're just cultivating that energy through channeling divine feminine energy uh but this fire element card talks about beginnings new beginnings or um, fresh ones after the old has been scorched away. This person could have fire placements, so Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, they certainly don't have to. Um, but I definitely think that this person either has communicated the fact that they desire something more with you or that they desire you or that they desire to explore this connection or they want to. Um, and it might be implied through their energy, but maybe the communication is casual. They may be waiting to communicate with you in person. Um, but when it comes to you, having Hermes come out here, um, he's considered a messenger, um, and especially a messenger between humans and gods. And with the offering here, um, you could, depending on how significant this person is to you, um, your connection with them may be bringing you closer to your own spirituality, your own divinity. And it may be opening you up to new ways of communication or you're opening this person up to becoming a better communicator. I also think that this person has developed a lot of confidence um, either through the connection that you have together or through working through issues in past connections or this connection. Um, but this person is a lot more sure of themselves. And I think that in the past, they, they tended to isolate themselves or they tended to just kind of be at a distance, but they've been doing a lot of healing and they, um, they see you as something worthwhile. They see you as something worth, um, sacrificing their safety and solitude or sacrificing something that matters to them in order to have a more, to have a connection with you, to have an authentic connection with you, something like that. For others, you may feel like the universe is offering this person or that this person is a gift from the universe. With the Divine Feminine card being here, I do think that this person either has um, more feminine energy than masculine energy or... Um, this person has is opening up to and learning about divine feminine energy and embodying that for a select few of you if you believe in the concept of like twin souls and things like that this could be like divine feminine specifically and that could be your confirmation um but that's not going to be for all of you i do think no matter what though like this person has a lot of passion for you a lot of desire for you i think you make this person really excited um like there's there's tons of pinks and reds in this pile and a lot of fierceness and and even what i noticed too which i think is kind of interesting is that both both figures on these cards have like winged helmets 
and I think that this person is becoming confident in who they are and so they I think they want to offer you something like they want to be honest about how they're feeling or they want to maybe they've already offered you something and maybe that's something you weren't interested in or um, maybe you did take it or maybe this is something they're considering but essentially um, this is pretty clear as day like this person wants to is willing to sacrifice something in order to hopefully bring about a more authentic connection between the two of you more authentic communication or um get things going between the two of you in a romantic way um for some of you i feel called to say if you feel like this person is just so if this is a new person a person that you that you haven't known for very long actually it, it doesn't matter because their intentions are deeper than what it seems on the surface is the point of what I'm trying to say. On the surface, I, I think they're just doing, um, they're just trying not to, uh, maybe they're waiting for the right time to talk about this or maybe they're, um, they, have, they don't have the confidence quite yet to uh, offer whatever it is that they're offering. This could be a gift, it could be, um, their feelings it could be um, an offer to like go on a date or an offer to um, do so I mean it could be anything but there is a lot of um, Norse Norse Im like not imagery but energy going on here um, because this offering card also talks about Odin um, he so for example Odin is often depicted with a an eye patch over one eye because he um, willingly sacrificed one of his eyes in order to gain immense wisdom. So like this person, I think for a lot of you, this person is willing to sacrifice their singleness or their um, fear of commitment in order to be open to this connection. They're definitely afraid of getting burned. And I think you might be mirroring that too unless you're not interested in, in this person in that way, then um, maybe that's why this person is holding back or maybe they're uncertain of um, what your desires are and so they're just trying to feel you out through communicating. But I, th I think that, okay, this makes sense because this is definitely more pink and this is definitely more red. And I think that um, outwardly, they're coming towards you in a way that is very grounded but also kind of indicates that there's more there than just like, you know, a friendly neighborhood chat. Like, ah, Bob, you know, how are your petunias? Like, you know what I mean? It's not like that. Like this person is definitely wanting to make it clear like that they want something more, but maybe they're just like waiting for the right time or maybe they're waiting to be able to communicate with you in person. Um, Hermes does also roll over like, uh, technology and technological communication so maybe you haven't seen them in person in a while or maybe you haven't met them in person yet so maybe that's something this person is waiting for but having all of this pink over here especially with the divine feminine um i think that this person's feelings run pretty deep um and i would say that's maybe more so for the people who have like known this person for a little while if this is a fresh connection though i think that this person has done a lot of work to feel good about themselves, heal a lot of wounds. And if that's the case, like this person, whatever they're offering to you, it comes with good intentions from a genuine place. It's not from a hit it and quit it or energy like that. That's not where they're coming from. They're coming from a place of confidence and, and self-assuredness and like they've they've done enough work on themselves to the point where even if they are rejected by you they they know that they will be be okay but i think this person has had a lot of awareness that maybe they pushed people out in the past and pushed away what they desired in the past solely because um maybe they were afraid of being vulnerable or afraid of what sharing their life with someone might look like so if this sounds like someone that you wanted to know about let's go ahead and see what they think of you and what they are thinking about you. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of nice to switch things up and 
do things in a bit of a different format. Like it feels weird doing the shorter readings, but I like them in the sense that I get to like and feel different energies or experience different energies in a more rapid succession. But um, like I said in the intro, this is the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. I love this deck. I was about to say it was one of my favorites, but I totally just said that in pile one. But if I'm being honest, I like I like this deck more than the way of a panda deck. Because I think this is actually one of my favorites. But I love all my decks, so it's hard for me to, you know, say I like one or the other. But they're all amazing in their own ways. <laughs> like, I just gotta look at my tarot decks and be like, ladies, you're all beautiful. Okay, so let's see. Spirit... What does this person think of pile two? Or what do they think at this time? This reading is timeless, by the way. All right, we're taking these. Eight of Pentacles, Five of Wands in reverse, and the star. Meow, meow, meow. What else, spirit? We have the Queen of Swords in reverse. We have, what's introspection? Oh, it's the hermit in reverse. Okay, let's get some clarifiers. Can you clarify the eight of pentacles, please? We have the empress upright. I just heard Fergie in my head, like I'd be up in the gym, just working on my fitness. Spirit's her witness. Ooh, wee. <laughs> okay, five of wands in reverse, please, spirit. Two of Cups in reverse, Star, Two of Wands upright, oh I'm hearing Queen in my head, don't stop me now. We have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, and finally with introspection in reverse, we have the Queen of Pentacles upright, wow, okay, this is actually really awesome energy. And on the back of the deck we have the King of Swords with the devil in reverse underneath that. Wow, yeah, this person, like I, I've already said, whether this is a new person or somebody that you have been through hell and high water with or have been through hell and high water over and not acknowledged with, this person has grown a lot. And, and they, the, the spirit of swords is the king of swords in this deck. And, um, this person like sees the light, they see the truth, like, and, and their thoughts about you are, are laser focused in a very positive way. Like they're almost not allowing themselves to think negatively about this connection. Yeah. Cause they see the truth now. They, they've, they're seeing beyond their own wounds, their own pain, their own um, I just had this intense urge to put this card in my candle and set it on fire. Um, I'm obviously not going to do that because that would be insane. Um, but I think it's metaphorical for the fact that this person with that, all that fire energy has burned away a lot of, a lot of things that restricted them from being confident, that restricted them from being more upfront, that restricted them from being more um, for being more sure of themselves as well in life. And they have a lot more awareness than they once did. This person has a lot of wisdom, either for their age or just in general. Um, and they've been working really hard on themselves, especially in their own development. I feel like they've really been staying in their own lane. Um, and if you've been doing that too, I think that they're aware of that. And, and they're honestly kind of impressed with how their own work on themselves has aligned them with you in some way or realigned them with you. Um, with this Empress card here, I think that they, I think this goes both ways. I, I think that they 
feel a lot more abundant and a lot more sure of themselves. And I think that they see that within you as well. Um, or they may see you as the empress. They may feel like they are, are working to be worthy of somebody like you. Um, or they may realize that they that they are worthy of somebody like you and that maybe they were selling themselves short in the past and, and being really unfair. But the five of wands in reverse with the two of cups in reverse, I think this person is aware of is aware of the fact now that they were resisting this connection or fighting this connection or fighting connection in general if it's an if it's a new person. Um because of their own fear of of having the two of cups with somebody which is just a mutually flowing loving connection with somebody you know and i think that um if there were arguments with this person in the past or if this person was fighting with themselves i think they're realizing like if they were placing blame on you or placing blame on others in general, I think they're realizing now that they have to, all they can really do is take responsibility for, for their own actions and, and how they play a role in things. Flamingos could be significant as well. For some of you, I get the vibe that this is a same sex connection, but that's not going to be for all of you. Um, and I want to be clear because I have people ask me sometimes if I can do like specifically LGBTQIA plus readings, but like all, all of them are in the sense that I'm just reading energies. Like if you're watching a current feelings video, like I'm sure there are things that I'll miss. I just, I, I don't know. If you're part of that community, tell me how I could read for you guys in a way that makes you feel more represented and feels like you've been seen. So Cause I, cause I don't know, I've, I'm going to do that. I want to make sure that I'm doing it in a way that's actually like useful and beneficial for you guys, if you get what I'm saying. But, um, all of my readings are for everyone. Like it's, it's just up to you to decide if it, if it actually resonates with you or not. But, um, especially when it comes to my love readings, like there's, there's no implication that, that they have to be hetero connections. Like it's just energy, bro. Like, everybody's welcome here. But anyway, with the star and the two of wands, I think that this person has hope for this connection and hope for where it's going. Um, I think they try not to get too, uh, get too crazy with, um, like, fantasies and stuff of what they want to happen between the two of you. But I do think that this person has hope and they're making plans. Um, travel could have something to do with this, but... I think that they are recognizing that they are worthy of good things the same way anyone else is. And they're, I think they're realizing now, I feel like this person either thinks that they've always been open and vulnerable with people, or if you have history with this person, I feel like this person thinks that they've always been open and vulnerable with you and and they've they've realized that that's not actually the case um I think they grew up in a family that was uh not the most constructive when it comes to sharing emotions this person may have had to heal like emotional neglect or that may be something that they are healing did I already say that 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 this person or both of you kind of feel like you have avoidant attachments um you may not, but I do think that this person has some. And I think that this person thought really badly of themselves for a long time. And I think that stemmed from their upbringing. And it may not be like their family that did this to them. It could have been like their school environment or just, you know, their community in general. But I do think that this person... For some of you, they may have grown up in like golden handcuffs where um, they may have been supported financially by their family, but um, in exchange, they couldn't be themselves or they couldn't be who they truly wanted to be. But I feel like this person has gotten out of that because we have this queen of pentacles here. I feel like this person, um, they either see you as a queen of pentacles or it could be both these. They could see you as a queen of pentacles. So somebody like 
that they like for some of you um this person may see you as like the ideal like spouse or the ideal like person to build with to grow with they see you as somebody very solid very stable and i think this person is realizing that like if you've always been that way, then then they realize that they needed to get on that level too. Or this person may be realizing that they had the capabilities of being like you this whole time. I feel like they feel more abundant and secure in themselves. Virgo energy is really strong here. Um, same with Aquarius. But with the with the Hermit in reverse being clarified by the Queen of Pentacles... I think that this person is finally in an energy of taking action in the physical and not just um, pondering what they should do, thinking about what they should do, ruminating about what they should do, beating themselves up about what they should do. This person's third eye is open now. So I do think that they are starting to trust their own intuitive senses more. Um, I think they have intuitive feelings about you. I do think that, that there is an energetic connection here so like if you've been through separation with this person or if this connection is on and off or even if this is a new connection um I think that energetic cord is being established but if this is a past connection then I think that um that cord of energy has always been there between the two of you and like I think this person is conscious that they don't want to cut that cord I almost feel like for some of you this person went off to look in greener pastures and see if they could find something that they liked more um and they realized that 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 wasn't the case like they only wanted you or this person has gained a lot gained a lot of wisdom uh from their past experiences and i think that there's a deep knowing like they're laser focused on you um until they have a reason not to be, which would be like a rejection or something like that. So that may be why this person is holding back, just because they want everything to be perfect. <laughs> I just had this, um, I just had this uh, flash image, flash clip in my head um, from a very specific Simpsons episode. Um, it's actually my favorite episode ever. I don't know why, um, but it's a really good episode. It's called Homer's Enemy. And um what spirit was showing me was a scene where his enemy in this scene is is a is a coworker that just started working there and has had like a really tough and difficult life and he's like trying really hard to impress this person because he wants this person to like them and he's like just going down the line like looking at his kid like Marge per well Marge is his wife he's like Okay, everything needs to be perfect. Marge, perfect. Bart, perfect. Lisa, perfect. Other kid, perfect, which he meant Maggie. But um, he got, would get so worked up over this coworker because he wanted this coworker to like him, which I mean, maybe this is a coworker, but it feels like there's something deeper here, which I won't tell HR if you're coworkers. <laughs> Your secret is safe with me. But um, I think no matter what, this person maybe in the past was so worked up by your energy and was so afraid to mess something up that maybe they held back a lot and, and held everything back to the point where you couldn't even tell how they felt about you. And maybe they're realizing that now, or maybe they're realizing that they put you on a pedestal they shouldn't have put you on in the first place. And they're starting to kind of realize that, that the playing field needs to be balanced. Um, but for those of you who this is a new person, um, I definitely think that they feel very hopeful about this connection. Like they feel ready to explore something with you. Like they want to offer you something. Um, and I think that they're feeling confident in their ability to like show up and be authentic. Um, I think that they are looking, they're, they're starting to have much healthier attachments and healthier viewpoints of romantic connections or connections in general. And I feel like this person is just trying to nourish this connection in a way that is still balanced and rational and not too much it's like this person is using their mentality and like the wisdom that they've gained either through their past experiences or past experiences compounded with their experience with you to not re repeat the mistakes of the past essentially and um this person is in a much more sustainable energy which is what i would say 
because um, interestingly, the only wands card that we have is the five of wands. Everything else is very grounded. And so I think that this person feels a lot of desire and a lot of passion for you, but they do not allow that to intercept um, the wisdom that they've gained. It would not cause them to let go of like their integrity, their dignity, anything of that nature. But it's interesting because like the way that they think of you is a lot more about them and it's not, and it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the fact that they are so into you and they just like, they really don't want to mess anything up. And so I think that they just become increasingly like self, self-awareness in a way that, that they're like, over analyzing themselves or their behavior or what they should do. Oh, I lied. There's there's another one. There's literally the two of wands right there. I don't know why I was like, oh, there's only one of wands card. Um But yeah, this person is making a plan towards you for sure. Um but I think also they're not they're they're not forcing things. So like with the Empress card being here in the Eight of Pentacles, it's like they're thinking about putting more effort into this connection, putting more work into it but they kind of want it to happen naturally. They don't want to force anything to happen. Um, Cause maybe for some of you, this connection, uh, if it if it was a past connection um, or, or somebody that you've had, you've dealt with in the past, uh, it could have been kind of like a fire where it was really passionate for a minute and then it burned out just as quickly. Um, but if it is a past connection and it's enduring to the point where you both are in communication now or seem to be headed towards that direction, like maybe this person will reach out to you if you're not talking to them. Um, it does seem like this person is realizing that you both could hold this passion out to make it a lasting and enduring connection if you both are invested in it. And this person is feeling like you you are invested in it too or hoping that you will be. Um, they're kind of just working up the confidence to face that uncertainty and, and face you and, and be upfront and transparent. But um, if this is a new connection, I think that um, I think that that you you definitely kind of came out of nowhere and you were not on their radar and I think that they typically do feel more comfortable in very quick passionate connections that don't endure but they see something enduring with you because they see you as as somebody very valuable somebody that that they look up to in some way you may be like you may have a following on social media or um you may just be in a good place financially or, or you know, making good moves in your career, but this person really admires you for that. And I think that this person, like, I'm thinking of a really random movie. Uh, it's like the third Chronicles of Narnia movie, which it's also a book, but, uh, it's like, I think it's, it's got something to do with like a Caspian sea or Caspian prince something like that I haven't seen it in a while but um there's just this one scene where uh all the Narnia kids except for like the oldest one are on, on the boat with the the prince that is the other protagonist of this film and some girl that's like actually a star like ends up coming on the ship and like the prince is like like goo goo eyed about about her because like like obviously she's the hottest thing ever she just came from a star and like it, it really matches this irresistible vibe so maybe that's how this person sees you like they see you as like look up that scene like and that look is just like the look the energy that it exudes like unfucking mistakable like and that's kind of the energy that this person has towards you even if they wouldn't necessarily admit that um you're very good at playing things cool I will say um and I think that this person tries to play it cool too but they're kind of tired of it um or if this is a new person with you they are finally feeling like they don't they don't want to play it cool anymore. They, um, they're ready to be more open and authentic because they think of you as someone very nurturing, somebody that they feel, um, very cared for around. And I think that that is kind of, 
kind of rare for them. So that's what they think of you. Let's go ahead and uh, get some advice from spirit then. This may have to do with this person or this may have nothing to do with this person. Um, I just kind of wanted to do something shorter today where we just see what's up and, and check out the vibes for a lot of different, <laughs> for a lot of different uh, types of energies. But those are their thoughts of you. What they may do, I don't know. That's up to them and the universe and you. So let's go ahead and finish off this reading. Spirit, what advice would you like to leave Pile 2 with? You're appreciated. Your family and friends appreciate you more than you know. Relax. Everything is okay. I want to notice that it, waterfalls could be like a significant synchronicity because there's like a waterfall in the empress card and then there's one here and it says relax everything is okay everything is working out perfectly and the situation will resolve effortlessly expect miraculous solutions to unfold so i think the universe has got this i feel called to grab grab this one we have good vibrations you're vibrating at a high level use this to your advantage the law of attraction will work really effectively for you right now and on the back of the deck, we have coincidences. Take note of the coincidences which are occurring around you right now. The universe is trying to have a say in your life. So I'm definitely curious to know what, what synchronicities or coincidences you are uh, experiencing. Um, so definitely comment those down below if this resonated and you're curious. But pile two i think that is all i have so thank you guys so much for watching this reading and for watching my ads that is the simplest and easiest way to support me but if you'd like to support me in other ways you can like this video you can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little notification bell to be part of my notification squad i always respond to comments when i first upload after that it's kind of iffy uh because you know i'm just being chaos you know but um what the fuck was I saying? Uh, you can, yeah, you can do those, the youtube -y things. Um, you can check out my merch, which is linked below. You can check out my social media, which is also linked below, but do be aware that there are a lot of scammers pretending to be me. So if it's not linked below in this video, it's not mine. Um, I'm not on Facebook. I saw that they were on Facebook now, which like, <laughs> good for them. Have fun. Um, but on Instagram, they're like really bad. So it, if you get a follow by somebody that you think is me, it, I promise you it's probably a scammer. Um, yeah, like I'll never solicit you for a personal reading in your DMs. Like I don't, I don't do that and I'm not doing personal readings right now. But anyway, um, yeah, I think... I think that's all I have. So thank you guys so, so, so much for letting me read your cards and for letting me tap into this person's energy and for being here and all that. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 3. If you guys chose this Rutilated Quartz Angel and the Wildwood Tarot, this is going to be your reading. Thank you so much for being here. So to make sure this is actually your reading, we're gonna see whose energy we are channeling. I just wanted to remind you that um, when we're talking about their thoughts, if this does resonate as somebody that you know or somebody that you wanted to hear about, um, because we're channeling from their perspective, what they think and what their thoughts are do not mean that things are the objective reality. So just be aware of that. But to start, we have the seed. We have, I forgive myself for giving my power away by valuing the opinions of others over my own. I choose to believe that when I trust myself to clarify and stand by my own truth, I allow for the creation of a world I actually want to live in. We also have Taurus. I have. <laughs> We have Hades with death. We have conception, number 16, and it says the frequency of conception invites us to bring our consciousness to our origin, the place where everything in creation begins. It helps us to remember the infinite potential and possibilities of this space and what we can manifest to our, our own focused awareness and intention. And finally, we have Isis with protection. So I'm kind of obsessed with how interconnected all of these oracles are. And what's kind of wild about it is um, I think that that 
even even I mean even on these cards like there's insane interconnection um, and I, I do think that you are connected to this person beyond this lifetime um, especially with the angel card being here um, this person may feel like you um, are a blessing from like the universe um, or a blessing from angels uh, or vice versa maybe you both feel that way um, but for a lot of you, it does feel like this connection is newer, whether it is a friendship or something like that. If not, um, even if it's an older connection, I would say that there, if it's an older connection, I would say that, that there has been a change within it. Um, like for example, if this is somebody from your family or something like that, um, I think it's less likely that it's somebody from your family, but I do think it's somebody that is part of your soul family. So there is a deep resonance with them. Like, and you may not understand why you feel such a deep resonance with them because maybe you haven't known them for very long. Um, but I think even within that time, the energy has been free enough to establish some sort of connectivity to one another in, in a way that's like authentic and safe uh because one thing that i can tell about this person is that they really value their connection with you and it's something that they want to protect and maintain and keep safe whether that's as friends or something more um this person is definitely very grounded pretty focused on like they may be in a nature person they might like trees um or they may just be like they could be into herbalism, uh, or they, they have this energy that's quite level-headed with 14 being here. Um, I think that, that they're, the way that they perceive the world has changed and that may be in part because of you. If not, um, I think that you met this person at a time when they were changing in a lot of ways or had already gone through a lot of changes and you're able to see the positive results of what this person's personal journey led them to be. And I think that it, knowing their story, it makes you have a lot of respect for, for who they are. Um, and I think that this person also, your connection, you've taught them a lot about like counting their blessings. Um, but I wanna talk about Hades because I'm thinking of the story. So Hades is the God of the underworld in Greek mythology. And um, he's kind of misunderstood uh, and I think that this person is also misunderstood. Like maybe they have a darker look or a darker image, but they have like a heart of gold or a very genuine, sincere heart where they don't even have the room or the energy to pretend to be something that they're not. If this is a newer connection, I think that they're definitely excited about the potential of what this could become. And it might have seemed like you, you entered their life in, in a way that was just like out of nowhere, but they feel very protective over you and over um, your connection, whatever type of connection that may be. I think that you've given this person the confidence to be more, you've given them the confidence to be more confident in who they are instead of trying to fit what other people think they should be. And I think that this person, it seems like there's nothing but potential for this connection. Um, and, and it's only started to germinate. <laughs> it's only started to um, start growing. And I think that um, if this is a romantic connection or even just a, even a platonic connection, sharing your feelings with one another, um, whether you have been doing that or are, or this person is hoping to do that in the future, um, I think that will help 
this seed grow into something more. But as of right now in the present, this person, um, this person is somebody that sees your connection as something full of potential and something that they don't quite fully understand because it just because there's a lot of energy between the two of you that's underneath the surface that doesn't make any rational or logical sense but makes sense in a d divine sort of way um you bring this person back to basics and I think that this person is able to share their darker side with you. They're able to share their um, philosophical and spiritual side with you. And I think that there is just this level of reciprocity between the two of you that this person never wants to let go of. And so I think like for some of you, for example, if maybe this connection hasn't been defined as romantic or platonic. I think that this person is in this energy of like, I don't care what it is. I just want this person in my life. I want to protect the good natured energy that we have between each other. And I think that this person sees infinite potential between the two of you. And I totally forgot what I was saying about Hades. So, um, you know, this person wants love just like anyone else. And, and, you know, love can come in many different forms. And I think they want your love in, in whatever way that is. So whether it's friendly, whether it's f familial or romantic, they, your energy has changed them in a way that like fully solidified changes that they were already making. And your presence in their life has filled in a lot of gaps um, in terms of questions that they had for themselves and their soul's origins about the universe. Um, for some of you, this person could be like your bestie, like your OG uh, friend or somebody that you've had um, for a while. For some of you, this could be like, like a legit like twin, like somebody you shared a womb with. Um, I mean, I guess it could be... Um, in, in a soul way, but it really feels more like this feels despite the spiritual energy here, there's a lot of grounding and like earthly energy here. Um, a lot of divine feminine wisdom being shared between the two of you. So like good natured, like communication, um, create, creative creativity and creative ideas are shared between the two of you or that's something that this person wants to do because they are definitely a very creative person they could be like an artist or um just be very passionate about like visuals or they could honestly have a very straight laced job but be creative in their free time like i'm seeing right now like a photography dark room so um maybe they're into like f photography or something like that but um with the taurus card here I think that this person, they really like food and they really like the sensual pleasures in life. So like, you know, food, sex, um, and that, and that may not be with you. Like if this is platonic, like that's why I say, depending on the connection, you know, take what resonates and throw out what does not. <laughs> um, but if this is romantic in nature or has the potential to get there, I think that this person, um, if it's already if if you've already been physical with this person, I think that they um it attached them to you in a way that changed them like it was something that they very much enjoyed and something that they they felt lucky to like be there with you and I think that that they fully recognize that they have something really special um but if you haven't been physical with them and they you want to or you anticipate that happening um i think that this person really wants to make a good impression or really just wants to show you that there's somebody that you can trust they want to show you that they are somebody who you know you can trust them to have your back. Um, sorry, I got, I was started getting downloads. So the thing that I keep being redirected to, cause I keep getting lost in my channeling. Um, if you know the story of Hades and Persephone, 
Um, Hades like really wanted to marry Persephone. Um, and Persephone's mom, Demeter, like was not down for that. And Hades was kind of like, mm, fucking, I think I'm gonna marry her anyway and take her to the underworld with me. And obviously that destroyed Demeter. And this is supposedly the story for why we have seasons because she was so distraught. Demeter's uh, role is with like agriculture and things like that. Um, and I can't remember who it was that came to retrieve Persephone, but um, Persephone had eaten six pomegranate seeds. And because she, there, there's a rule about the underworld that if you, you can't eat or drink anything, Taurus energy, am I right? The Taurus would be, tor my Tauruses would be stuck in the underworld with peace and love. Um, but essentially, she could never fully leave the underworld for good because she had consumed those pomegranate seeds. So they came up with this deal that she would be with her mother for six months and then be with Hades for six months and you know, do the, do a little switcheroo. Um, but essentially the point of that story is I think that there is something about this person where they are showing you a different side of the world that you haven't seen before. Um, even if it's like not even anything new, it's just a different way of seeing things where like there's no going back after like meeting this person, like after being around this person. Um, this is a very solid person and maybe they haven't always been solid in the past, but they want to be solid for you. Like they want you to feel safe to talk to them about anything. Um, and they just view you as something so precious and special. I'm hearing Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift in my head. And so I feel like this person um, may have some doubts in terms of like how long you'll be in their life. Mainly not because they like anticipate like pulling the rug from underneath you or something like that, but just because the, they, they really care about everybody's personal freedom and they wouldn't, while they feel protective over you, they would never want to be so domineering to the point where um, they would refuse to let you go. So I think that this person just hopes that no matter where you go, no matter where you end up in life, and, and you might be like, whoa, bro, I like just met this person like two weeks ago and they already feel this way. And I'd be like, yeah, I think it's because the, the feelings here run deeper than just, you haven't known, you've known this person for two weeks in this lifetime, let's just say that. Um, I think that, that that your connection to one another runs deeper than you realize and I think that that's something that you're going to discover um, as you as you as this connection grows but no matter what um, oh and Isis is also um, the protector of souls in the underworld I think uh, because Osiris uh, when he got uh, brutally yeeted uh and had all of his parts yeeted around the planet uh isis collected all the parts together put him back together long enough so that they could have this uh, son horus um there is a lot of like this could be like somebody that you have a child with or um want to have a child with um because i mean that that's kind of i mean between conception seed uh and taurus and isis <laughs> That could definitely be a thing but uh there's a lot about creation here and i think that you're showing this person that they can kind of create the life that they want and that they can create outcomes that they want and i think that you just have a lot of wisdom that for this person they have just found so valuable and it's like they have a loyalty to you where even if you weren't loyal to them they would still have your back because that's just how much you've impacted them. And maybe for some of you, it, it hasn't reached that point yet, but if you both continue to go with the flow and be authentic with one another, that's where it will head. Um, but yeah, if that sounds like a person you know, let's go ahead and see what they think about you. So we, you guys chose the Wildwood Tarot, which I, I think is just crazy. Like 
the way spirit works, like interconnecting things. Um, and there's also just a lot of green in your spread. So I definitely think this is a heart connection of some kind. Like there's a lot of love here, even if it's not a romantic kind. Um, but yeah, this is one of those decks where, uh, we can't have nice things because the names have to be extra fancy, but uh, I have the book here, so if I don't know what one is, you're just gonna have to watch me be unprofessional and look up and see what the card is, because I just can't remember all of them all the time. I will give this deck credit, though. They didn't use Roman numerals on the Major Arcana, and I do, I do appreciate that, because that leaves me with a little less, a little less brain work. Okay, one more shuffle, and then get in there. Okay, so Spirit, what does um, this person think of Pile 3, please? I wanted to say Pile 1. Okay, so we have the Six of Swords in reverse. Or is that Wands? I guess we'll see. Um, okay, so we have the Eight of pentacles in reverse we have the star in reverse we have the tower upright one more <laughs> no in this deck it's the blasted oak and we have the sun in reverse so I definitely feel like this person, like you've turned this person's world upside down in like a good way. Um, but I also think that like a lot of this, a lot of this turning the world upside down isn't really you. And it's, mo it's more so like factors of their life that happened that don't have to do with you, but you becoming aligned with them brought them a lot of awareness about the changes that they're going through. And yeah, I'm gonna finish shuffling before I get into it. So, um, okay, so we have the Nine of Pentacles upright. We have the Seven of Cups in reverse. We have the Six of Pentacles upright. We have the lovers upright. And we have the nine of bows. Ah, oh, is that wands? In reverse. And on the back of the deck, we have the four of swords. Okay. Um, we're just gonna... We're just going to confirm a few things uh, before we get into it. Uh, I want to make sure. Okay, so bows are, are wands in this case, I believe. Vessels are cups, obviously. Okay, six of bows. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay. Bows are wands because that says spark of life. And then uh, arrows are swords. Okay, we're good. We are good to go, brothers and sisters. Okay, let's start. Okay, so this may actually give you some insight into what they've been going through that they haven't told you about quite yet. Um, but I do wanna start by saying like, your presence in their life is incredibly healing and they will fight to keep you to keep you a part of their life so long as you're not like oh my god literally get away from me like I can't I can't stand you anymore like leave me the frick alone like, <laughs> like I guess I don't know why I feel the need to just talk like this all the time um but they so Taurus energy can also be kind of stubborn 
this person doesn't have to have any Taurus placements at all. Um, we can like embody the energy of the zodiac sign without it even having that sign in our charts. Um, but I think that this person was really stubborn about how they viewed life for a long time. With the Nine of Pentacles here, I think that this person was really just focused on their own independence, focused on what they wanted. And I think that you're in a similar energy or were in a similar energy. And I think they're incredibly impressed by you. Um, this person has this energy where like, they were really attached to a time period in their life. Um, and I don't think that this this attachment to a time period had to do with any anyone other than themselves. I think they, they got attached to a version of themselves or an ideal of the person that they thought that they wanted to be. But I think that they are realizing that they haven't always put their energy in the best places in the best ways. Um, This person also really worries that they're a burden on you. Um, if there's an age gap here, if you're younger, I think that this person um, really doesn't want to be a corrupting influence in a way where uh, they make your decisions for you. Like they think it's really important that you make decisions for yourself and that you make decisions based upon what is important to you. But I also think that they that you pull on their heartstrings in a way where they just want to give to you. And I think that they have this like inner awareness of like, wow, if uh, pile three was more nefarious, like I would be totally sucked dry and screwed over. Um, and maybe that's happened to this person in the past. And maybe that made them hesitant to get to know you or maybe hesitant to be open to your energy. It does kind of seem like there's the things that this person hasn't fully healed or moved on from that uh, that your presence, whether you realize it or not, is assisting them with that in some way. Um, and with the Nine of Pentacles here, I think that this person is maybe more open minded to traditional, more traditional types of connections than they once were. But take that as that resonates because I'm not necessarily sure. I think that this person this person recognizes that I'm sorry I, I just had to stop because I was getting too much at once spirit can you like formulate the information in a more consistent way please um what I wanted to say was, I, I really do think, I'm not gonna lie, I, I have a harder time seeing this as like a family type connection, because, I, I mean, it could be, but what I was saying about this being some sort of past life connection, like, I do think that you two are tied to one another in a way that you can't quite explain, um, especially with the forest lovers, like, maybe you guys like nature or maybe nature is something that you bond over or um, something that you both aspire to like conserve or save or maybe like you both are vegetarians or vegans or there's something about environmental conservation or like um, love and respect for the environment that you both feel passionate about um, that I think that this person really admires about you but th this person like point blank recognizes that you are are out of this world in like the best way where the tower like or I guess in this case blasted oak um you shook this person up but like in the best way possible where they don't know like they're, if I'm being honest, they're, they're more in their feels than their thoughts. Um, but their feels are helping them heal their thoughts. 
their feels about you are helping them heal their thoughts. Um, cause maybe this person had a more destructive mindset in the past. I think this person is thinking about the possibility that you may not be interested in them or that you may not, um, want a deeper connection like even because like I could totally I'm sorry like I could totally see this being like me and my bestie you know what I mean so like this could totally be a best somebody that like wants to be closer friends with you but um doesn't want to invade your personal space um but no matter what I, I would say that like you and this person because the lovers is typically pretty reciprocal um and usually divinely guided in some way and I feel like this person just sees you as an excellent counterpart in what, whatever way you fit into their life. Um, and they see, they see you as somebody that they would actually change how they're living for you. Because I think in the past, this person hasn't really liked to get attached to people because they've kind of they've kind of um associated connection with pain and i think that this person just always felt like ah uh, like intimate connections and i don't mean intimate in just like a physical way but intimate in terms of like you know talking about your true feelings, talking about what's going on in your life, being real, being honest, being upfront. Um, I feel like this person didn't typically share themselves with people or be too open or put too much effort to, to work on and sustain connections because it's almost like the more effort they put into them, the more fear it would create about losing something. And I think because this person had put a lot of effort into past connections that didn't work out very well, I think this person just had this feeling of like, I'm tired of putting all my energy into things where I end up just sad and confused and wondering how I could be so led so astray. And I think that this person lost a lot of hope in humanity or lost a lot of faith in humanity because maybe like a lot of people like rely on this person or take advantage of this person's kindness um, in order to benefit from them. And I think that you have changed their perspective in the sense that they realize that not everybody is like that. You've opened their eyes to the realization that yeah, there might be a lot of crappy people in the world, but you're not one of them. And in fact, you're like the opposite of crappy. You make them happy <laughs> and um, really happy actually. And I, and, and I think that freaks them out, especially if this is a newer connection. Like for some of you, you may not have not even like met this person in person yet. Um, and so maybe this person is trying not to like get too far ahead of themselves. Like they don't wanna, they don't wanna like, place expectations on this or, or place, um, place their hopes in it because when they have, they have been disappointed. So they're kind of just like taking this, taking the energy of your connection, like one day at a time and also taking time to like distance themselves from the connection when they feel like they just need to, to regroup their thoughts and like find their center again because I think this person has awareness that they could like easily lose themselves in you like you know when you have a friend um that has like a, a particular catchphrase and then you start saying it all the time like for example my little brother like <laughs> he he started saying bussin ironically and then he started saying it unironically and then I started saying it to make fun of him not saying it not ironically and now I say bussin unironically like it's it's like that type of energy it's like there's definitely no matter what type of connection this is there is bestie energy going on here and I love it and I think that this person loves it as well and it also just scares the shit out of them at the same time because like 
you know, losing somebody that you connect with on such an authentic and real level is really rare, even, even within romantic connections, if I'm being honest. And so I think that this person has really had a sense of identity around doing their own thing and being their own person and not conforming. And maybe this person is realizing that they had wounds around traditional society that they recognize was not um so so they had wounds around traditional society in some ways could be through religion um their parents their upbringing whatever it may be but traditional society they felt like wasn't for them they're 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 not about the normies and uh i think that that in their pursuit to be different their pursuit to be um their own unique self. They rejected a lot of valuable aspects of a traditional lifestyle that I think that they are now kind of retracting and um, reconfiguring how they feel balanced and, and the ways that they go about things because I think they're realizing that they misplaced a lot of their, they projected a lot of their wounds onto traditional practices that are actually like beneficial in the long run, if that makes sense. And um, with the sun in reverse, clarified by the nine of wands in reverse, I think that this person, like, they have no plans to, to hold out on you in the sense that, like, they're going to be upfront and honest with you about either how they're feeling or what they're feeling. Um, maybe they'll wait until they feel like it's the right time. But I think this person is anticipating a negative outcome in this connection. And actually, no, I don't want to say negative outcome. They're anticipating being disappointed because they have been disappointed a lot. Um, the sun in reverse though, like this person will just be happy as long as you either like, things either like stay on good terms or like this person gets to be a part of your life in some way because I feel like maybe for some of you like maybe you're not interested in a romantic connection with them but you still see them as a really valuable friend and I think that if that's the case then you can like like this person would still respect that like they would be a little bit bummed but um they would still be grateful to have you in in their life because they do see you as somebody really precious and special but if they uh if they, if, if, if it's mutual and in, in terms of like, this is something more, something romantic, something deeper, um, they're prepared to ride the roller coaster of whatever that is, ride the waves, ride, ride that flow of energy and see where it goes. Like they're very open to it because they find your presence to be very healing and, they feel more confident with you by by their side. Like they, they are willing to fight for this in a way that they haven't been willing to fight for other connections or other people in the past. I think um, this is somebody who prefers to remain detached and be maybe more pessimistic or more um, realistic. And I think that they're realizing that through your through your influence you are are helping them realize that life doesn't have to be even in the darkest places there are light and and you're that light and like i think i think that this person is like you know somebody who is edgier or um darker in a lot of ways or like appreciates the darker aspects of life and um i think you balance this person in a way where uh they're seeing sides to ways of life that they didn't see before. But they think of you very, very highly and they feel like the divine brought you into their life for a purpose and they're just, they're grateful to know you, if I'm being honest. Um, you, they may have also been like visiting you in your dreams or you may have, um, you may have, uh, there may be symbolic meditational things connected to them.
that that's just a random message, but yeah, that's what they think of you. So we're going to go ahead and finish off with some advice for you. Uh, this could have something to do with this person or it could have nothing to do with this person. Uh, I guess, I guess we'll see. So spirit, what advice do you have for pile three? Aw, this came out in pile two. You're appreciated. You're appreciated. Your friends and family appreciate you more than you know. And I think that this person is included in that. They appreciate you very much and they're very appreciative of what you have in your life. Oh, oh my gosh, this pile is all about new beginnings too. An exciting shift is on its way. A new job, project, promotion, or home is in the works. And focus. Remain completely focused on exactly what you want. The best is yet to come. And on the back of the deck, we have good vibrations. You're vibrating at a high level. Use this to your advantage. The law of attraction will work very effectively for you right now. So pile three, that is all I have for you guys. Um, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. And thank you so much for watching my ads. That is the simplest and easiest way to um, support me. But if you would like to support me in other ways, you can like this video. You can comment down below. Let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little notification bell to be part of my notification squad. I do respond to comments uh, when I first upload videos. After that, it's more iffy um but i also have merch if you want to check that out that will be linked down below as well as my social media do be aware though i have a lot of scammers pretending to be me so i will not solicit a personal reading from you in the dms i'm not doing personal readings right now if you follow me on instagram it's very likely that like two or three scammers will quickly follow you after um Oh yeah, and I'm not on Facebook at all. So if you get some shit saying that they're me on Facebook, that is not me. I haven't even logged into my personal Facebook in like nine months and my life has been better for it. So um, yeah, okay. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. That's all I have for you. Um, I really hope that you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you are watching this video and I hope you will come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile four. If you guys chose the Lara Marshall and the Santa Muerte Tarot. This is going to be your reading. Thank you so much for being here. So to make sure this reading is actually relevant for you, we're gonna go ahead and see what um, the energy we're channeling, so who this is coming from. Um, but just remember, if this is resonating once we go into the tarot, um, because I'm channeling from their perspective, it doesn't mean that their perspective is the objective truth. It just means it's their subjective reality. But okay, let's go ahead and start. So to start, we have the shaman. We have, I forgive myself for avoiding people in situations that may make me uncomfortable. I choose to believe that each time I give myself permission to change my mind and commit to a new way of showing up in the world, I allow myself to be moved to where the possibility of deeper comfort exists. We also have lunar eclipse with change. We have apuk with fear. We have empowerment. The frequency of empowerment supports our ability to show up fully and completely, uniting us with others in the deep trust that we are all connected through the same source. And finally, we have Andromache with strength. So this person is interesting. Um, and this is definitely a case where I think um, the type of connection will be different. Uh, but there's definitely an element where you cannot discount the complexity of the connection between you and this person. Um, I don't know if you're currently talking to this person um, or if you are, I don't know how frequently you're talking to them or how authentically you're talking to them. Because it does kind of seem like this person is either avoiding you or avoiding um, avoiding something that needs to be addressed between the two of you. Um, with this lunar eclipse and change here with fear, this person, you trigger a lot of fears within this person. And I don't know if this person necessarily is a very fearful person by nature which may make this like extra confusing for some of you they absolutely could be 
but I, I think that this person, you triggered fears in this person that were incredibly subconscious. And with this ego card here saying that um, I forgive myself for avoiding people in situations that may make me uncomfortable, I do think that this person has avoided you or avoided um, certain topics or avoided going too in depth with you because of their fear around something to do with you. Um, it does seem like the energy of this connection is out of both of your hands. It does seem to be something like divinely orchestrated by the universe. Um, now I do want to say that just because divine orchestration is involved doesn't mean that um, divine orchestration is like what your ego projects I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like things can be divinely orchestrated, but your ego may not be in alignment with what the divine orchestration is. So it's important to be aware that you're not projecting what you want from the connection and more so just surrendering to how it flows and see what the divine wants to show you through it. Um, and I, maybe that's a lesson that you guys have been learning. Like maybe you've had a lot of ego deaths. Um, it cut, does kind of seem like this person is having a bit of an, I think they've had ego deaths, but this doesn't really have to do with their ego. It actually has to do with their heart. Um, because no matter what type of connection this is, I think this person was afraid of how much they cared about you and afraid of how much your energy, your presence really impacted them in general. I think that this person does take a lot of pride in, in looking strong and looking, um, like a leader and they have this kind of fake it till you make it energy that that they've had I think for the majority of their life um if not the majority of their life um by their formative years like they started really realizing that they had to pretend like to not be vulnerable like I'm hearing Elsa in my head right now like conceal don't feel don't let them know but I think this person is letting go of that. <laughs> um, and it, it's come through these intense changes um, that have all been divine orchestration. Uh, I do think that when it comes to your connection with this person, you probably have no idea like what is in store. Or if you are not even talking to this person, you might be like, I don't even think they're going to come back or I don't even think they're going to communicate with me or I feel like this this friendship this connection this whatever is not salvageable or this person isn't interested in it um if you identify as more of like a mystical type person or somebody who is interested in shit like this and um you know just spiritual knowledge and the intelligence of the cosmos i think that you have inspired this person as well and I think that that is part of the divine orchestration of this connection. Yeah, part of your purpose, at least in terms of like where this connection is right now, I'm not saying anything for like the future because that's a mixture of free will and, you know, the universe being the universe. But um, I do think in the past, one of your purposes that was divinely orchestrated um, in this connection was to awaken this person to things that they weren't seeing before and awaken this person to aspects of themselves that they may not have realized were there but were always lying dormant and I think that this person realized that in order to be to have what they want with you or to be in a place where you two can exist in a harmonious connection space they would have to sacrifice things that were important to them and they were afraid of that. They were afraid of that change. This person may have, um, you know, maybe somebody who doesn't like to leave their comfort zone very often or um, they may have felt like your energy was too challenging for their ego to handle at the time. Um, and by that, I mean like, you know, when we talk about our egos, our egos are a part of us, but they aren't truly us. You know, they have their purpose and they're there to help protect us and protect our, um, protect our interests, protect our, um, 
self-esteem. But, you know, obviously too little or too much of it can be a problem. And it, it, it's a slippery bitch. Like, that. the ego, it'll make you think you're doing things for the highest good of all when really you're just doing it for yourself. Um, and I do think that there have been ego deaths um, for the person watching this and for the person I'm channeling about. Because there is a lot of... Um, Like I just heard trials and tribulations in my head. And I think that these are um, trials and tribulations that may be related to this connection or may not. But even if they're not related to the connection, these trials and tribulations are teaching both you and this person um, valuable lessons that you both can integrate within this connection if it's something that you and this person are willingly like if you're interacting together, but um, this person has been through a lot of changes, um, especially especially recently. I would say, like, I heard May in my head. Um, if you're watching this when I upload, when I'm uploading it, which is like almost January at this point. Uh, I don't know why that matters. This is a timeless reading, so it can be whenever. But like, if May was significant, or um, May or April. That could have been a turning point um, for this person. Like, I feel like something something shifted, and honestly, it could have been like a like a a transit of some kind that was meant to happen, and they were just energetically in the right place to utilize that transit to make a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Um, but this person is starting to fight back from their fear because I think. Well, we have to see what this person thinks, but I definitely think that they care about your opinion. Um, and I think that they are finding strength within themselves that they didn't even know that they had before. With Andromache here, um, I definitely think that this person is realizing that there's strength and power in, in feeling their emotions. Um, this card also talks about a balance of feminine and masculine energy. So I think that this person has been working really hard on balancing themselves. I don't think they're fully there, but I mean, truthfully too, like balance is something that is constantly shifting and fluctuating. So it's like, even if you achieve a state of balance, like give it two hours and you may not be anymore. You know what I mean? Um, balance is something that must be sustained and maintained. Um, and I think that that, this person is is learning how to stand in their own power and recognize uh, what they can control and to release what they can't. I think that they are realizing that they are more than they thought they were. I think that they were intimidated by by you in the sense that um, your your natural presence and energy triggered things within them, mainly things about like change and evolution um that they weren't comfortable with that they that they were not ready to let go of maybe because of wounds or things that they needed to heal um and I, I think that they've been in this long uncomfortable process of healing and a lot of it has been like They're gaining a lot of wisdom through hindsight in their experiences. And uh, they're kind of fighting the... There's definitely fear around facing their past or facing the person that they've been. But I think that they are learning that they are so much more than their negative beliefs and their negative perceptions. And that there's, there's this part within them that's finally rising up. Um, honestly, it could be like a Kundalini awakening for some for um, some of these people, but they're awakening in a way that they uh, that they've like never experienced before. And I think that this process of awakening has been something that has been incredibly gradual, but um, enough time has passed to the point where this gradual awakening has created huge shifts within this person. So this person definitely still has fear towards you, 
but they're starting to stand in their own their own power and recognize that they have more than they think they do but um there's something about this connection I, I keep hearing the word perseverance so it's like whether this is a whatever type of connection this is it does seem to be something that even if um you two stray from each other or things like that uh have ups and downs it does kind of seem like it perseveres through all of that you know, through all of the challenges and it may seem like it doesn't until the universe no you know brings something to your door one day is like oh surprise we had this here the whole time like it just was under your nose and it wasn't important so you didn't need to know about it uh but yeah okay we're gonna get into the tarot now so if you know who this person is uh let's go ahead and see what they think because that was the hard part about doing those energy checks sometimes is that I just get into the channeling and then I'm like, ah, this is not, this may not be, I may be getting too far ahead of myself, but we are using the Santa Muerte tarot and, uh, so Scorpio energy or, uh, the death card could be significant. I definitely do think that there is a lot of change, a lot of change, a lot of transformation. Um, Eighth house energy, for sure, uh, with this pile. And and I also think, too, like, there's, like, I'm excited to use this deck because I feel like we're going to get to the bare bones of what this person is actually thinking of you and not just what they, what they project. So, okay, spirit... What does this person truly think of pile four? Okay, so we have the seven of cups. What does this person think of pile four? We have the five of wands in reverse. We have the four of wands upright. We have the star upright. I'm hearing the song, We Have Justice Upright, uh, Movement by, uh, I never say his name right. It's like Hozier, Ho Hozier, Hozier? I don't know. H-O-Z-I-E-R, however you pronounce that. Okay. Uh, can we clarify the Seven of Cups, please? Okay, King of Pentacles. How about the Five of wands okay the two of wands a lot of fire energy here but we also have a lot of air energy libra and aquarius especially um <laughs> we have is that the six of wands or the nine of wands oh that's the nine of wands okay We have the Three of Pentacles in reverse. Justice upright. The Eight of Cups upright. And on the back of the deck, we have the Nine of Swords in reverse and the Sun in reverse. Okay, wow, okay, wait, no, Spirit wants me to, yeah. Okay, Page of Wands, Two of Cups. There's so much this person didn't see. If Okay, I want to say that if this is a platonic connection or a connection that um, there isn't any romantic feelings, this person feels like, well, actually, it doesn't even matter if there's romantic feelings or not. Um, this person feels like they took you for granted and they did not recognize um, the value of what they had until they lost it. They recognized that they were incredibly immature and they actually really ruminate over how they've created their own unhappiness. The universe kind of, I'm not going to lie, has been spanking this person. Um, but it's not because, like, they deserve to be punished. I genuinely, like, this is just me, but I don't believe that the universe uh, wants to punish us. I think that the universe is inherently good and wants, and wants the evolution and, you know, and once evolution and goodness, spiritual fulfillment for all beings and wants everyone to, 
to feel its love and to feel that it, it it's there and that it matters. Um, this person is incredibly intimidated by you. I really see your image here in the star, especially with like the shaman card coming out. I feel like I feel like you just. I'm hearing a uh, starry eyed by uh, Ellie Golding in my head right now, um, which is a good song so you should listen to it if you haven't but oh yeah like I'm hearing in my head like hit me like lightning which is a similar energy to eclipse energy it's like out of nowhere um and so I think for this person they've kind of been plagued with massive confusion uncertainty fear shame guilt regret um and all of these feelings have kind of culminated into one giant emotional stress ball that gets heavier and and weighs more over time and it, oh thanks spirit this is a perfect example um it's almost like i i noticed in this nine of swords it almost looks like like a, the steering wheel on a ship but it's like this steering wheel is permanently going towards darkness and and depths and this person If you dated this person in the past, like if you had a serious relationship with this person in the past, I think that they're feeling like whatever happened between the two of you was what they deserved um, and was rightful by the universe. I think that this person realizes that maybe they didn't do you justice, whether, I mean, whether you, no matter what type of connection you have with this person, this could be somebody that maybe, maybe they won't, Maybe there was the opportunity to be something more here, but this person just was really resistant to that because they weren't ready to face their own big dark ball of pain and they also weren't ready to grow up. And I think that they also had this idea of like fleeting happiness that was true happiness and that was only because they hadn't recognized what true happiness was in such a long time or maybe they never felt it to the point where they thought this um fickle and and fleeting feeling of like i wouldn't even call it happiness i would just call it ego fulfillment uh was real happiness and i think that that is what also drove this person to believe that there was that there's not much to society that there's not like that that like the world is dark and cruel and like we we live and we work and we die and that's it um, which I can relate because I used to have that perspective before I did this shit. Um, if you haven't watched my Why I Started Reading Tarot video, you may want to check that out because trust me, it wasn't, it was not love and light up in this house. <laughs> anyway, um, this person is definitely confused about your connection. I feel like they also are confused about who they want to be in life. And part of this avoidance um, with you comes from the fact that this person is very defensive um, and kind of hostile. And when their ego is threatened, uh, they can become very hostile and very argumentative very quickly. And I think that this person didn't want to or doesn't want to evoke that energy within your connection at all or anymore take that as it resonates. But with the four of wands and the nine of wands here, I think that this person recognizes that they have a resistance to allowing joy into their life. Like, because they feel like if they do, then it's just going to be taken away from them and it's not going to be worth it. This person definitely has regrets, especially with the star here, that they didn't like cultivate this connection more, that they didn't put more time and energy into your connection and I keep hearing friendship and so I think that even if this was a was a romantic connection of some kind I think that the friendship is really what's paramount between the two of you um there was a meeting of minds and a, a a feeling of mutual understanding between the two of you that that really was on a subconscious level I mean the fact that you guys picked the Lara Marshall you know shells um always make me think of the high priestess which is kind of similar to shaman energy uh, but it's, it's like this connection for the both of you 
Um, cause I think that there has to be some mutual, mutual lessons being learned here. This, um, I fucking lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're just gonna keep channeling. I also wanted to say that if you're ever watching a video of mine and I lose my train of thought or I stop saying something, don't like shit your pants over me not saying something. Cause if it wasn't, cause if I didn't say it, it probably wasn't worth hearing in the first place. You know, the way with the way that that divine guidance truly works is that like the universe is always communicating in so many different ways and like you have to trust your connection to the universe and trust what you believe in more than anything else. And maybe that's something that this connection is, is teaching you because maybe, um, I well, I was talking about the friendship here in the meeting of minds and maybe this person has always had this kind of degree of separation where, um, they were never completely enthralled by somebody or, or, um, they never put themselves in a position to be vulnerable, especially with this two of wands here, because usually like the two of wands is a very expansive card. It's about like, you know, making plans, discovering, seeing what's out there. And this two of wands is very like defensive and like, you know, he's got his, he's got his bones crossed, holding his guns and you know, he's just saying like, don't come this way. So I think that this person feels resistance to you, maybe because they're afraid of making the situation between the two of you worse or getting into an argument or more misunderstandings. I think there have been a lot of misunderstandings here. And I think that this person also um, doesn't really like to exist in their emotional body. And I think they have a lot of confusion and fear around their emotions. They understand um, fire energy very well. I think that they um, probably express themselves through through their physicality they're probably a very like tactile person they probably like um learning through doing or um i mean there's definitely an intellectual component as well but um i think that their true spirit is is very much like is very fiery in the sense that the parts of their true spirit that they feel comfortable expressing are very fiery that that's I need to correct that. Um, but anyway, this person has hope for this connection, but they also have fear that it's just too little too late. Shout out to Jojo. Um, or not just the Jojo, but all Jojos. Jojo Siwa, any Jojos watching this? Shout out to the JoJo's. Um, Powerpuff Girls might be significant because I just heard Mojo Jojo in my head. Um, but anyway, they they recognized that you balanced them out in a way that was incredibly important. But I think that at the time that that they realized that you had already either distanced yourself from them or they had already distanced themselves. Like, like there had been some kind of severance um, within this connection. And I think this person is really fucking sad about it or was, because here's the thing, these cards like speak of impending change that maybe it's not fully manifesting yet. Um, Cause remember energy is constantly fluctuating. That's why timeless tarot readings work. You know, um, you're drawn to, to a pile at the time that it resonates for you. Um, and like uh, you could watch one reading and it may not resonate for you, wait six months and then it's ex everything you needed to hear. Sometimes, sometimes it takes some time for energy to shift to where it, it makes sense for you. Um, but I feel like this person feels a need to be a more solid, either feels the need or wants to be a more solid presence in your life with this King of Pentacles. Like this, there is kind of this problematic energy where this person may view you a little bit as like a precious treasure and maybe not as a full realized human being with wonderful aspects and flaws just like them. Maybe that's something that they're learning or some, or 
part of the lesson that they're learning now, but they feel like they have to fit this kind of King of Pentacles role where um, they're somebody that you can trust, where they're somebody that um, you can depend on, where they can be generous towards you, generous towards the connection. And I think that this person still has a lot of confusion as to whether they can really be that person. And I think the real irony of it is, is that I think that they are they are creating resistance towards you because they are forcing themselves to fit into some sort of box that they think will be the type of box that you want to have. Like, if that makes sense, like they're, they're forcing themselves. They believe that they have to fulfill a certain role in order to be worthy of you. Um, which I think is something that they are, that they have been tearing down and learning. I think they are realizing that this is an illusion because they're getting their fight back, but not in a like aggressive, like abusive or bad way. It's, it's a fight in the sense of like, I think they're fighting back from their victim mentality and their and their fear based beliefs i think they're realizing that they have more power than they realize and i think this person has hope that maybe um this connection can be uh nurtured and, and grown but this person is also aware of like for some of you, you may not want to salvage this connection and that's something that they have to deal with. Maybe the reason they haven't come forward or, or talked to you is because they are afraid of what um, of what you might say or do. Uh, but I do see that they have hopes that the situation will balance out. There's a lot, like, this is one of the saddest Eight of Cups, like, ever. And I think that this person... I think that there has been a lot of sadness in this connection, no matter what type of connection it is, um, on both ends. And I think that a lot of it stems from miscommunication. A lot of it stems from expectations from your egos. A lot of it stems from fear of the unknown, fear of rejection, abandonment wounds, things like that. Um, and I think that, that there is kind of an interjection from, from spirit here saying that everything in this connection has happened the way it has meant to and the the more that you continue to like surrender it and accept it and just you know take action out of the purity of your heart and and you know try not to place certain expectations like i mean really that's like the best you can do um there there's something about this connection where it's like the wind it's like so whatever that means to you. But essentially what this person thinks of you is that they, they're kind of selfish in the sense that they see you and they may have projected like anger or frustration onto you like and, and avoid you because they think that you're the problem for why they feel all these things. But like, I think they're realizing that they were actually the problem and their own triggers to you just existing or triggers to you interacting with them uh were things that they needed to heal all along and that they couldn't have fixed by just avoiding and pretending like the problem wasn't there there may also have been um this person may also have a difficult relationship with their father um and maybe they um it, it's like it's like a relationship where they both want their respect and admiration um but also they objectively see things that this figure does that are not um, in alignment with what they personally believe. And so it leaves them in confusion because it's like there's certain aspects of their wisdom that they want to take on and then other aspects where they're like, I don't even know if that's true, but I fear the judgment of not following the advice of that. But this person is starting to stand in their power and they do have hope. And I think that they're realizing that everything that has happened in in this connection and in uh their life in general has meant to happen that way and i think things are balancing out in a way that's important but there is some grief and bittersweetness with this and so i think that if this person reappears in your life or um if you haven't had a deep conversation with this person in a while i think that you will see that um they're not gonna be the same person that you 
once knew them to be. And if they are, then I'm not channeling that person with peace and love. <laughs> like, cause this person um, is going through a lot of changes and important ones at that, but um, dismantling that big ball of painful energy takes a lot of time. And so they've been doing it slowly but surely and with the help and support of the universe. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off this reading just with some advice cards for you. Um, this could have to do with the connection. As, as I cut the deck, we have forgive. Whether in person or in your mind, forgive and move forward. The only person you're hurting by holding on to resentment is yourself. Um, but we'll see. These could have nothing to do with the connection. I just wanted to give you guys something. Uh, ooh, hell yeah. Wealth. Money is on its way to you. Think thoughts of abundance. We also have choose. You choose how you feel react and perceive everything in your life. Choose to only see through love and positivity and you're appreciated. You're appreciated by your friends and family more than you know. This has come out in almost like every single pile. Um, but on the back of the deck, we have be, be fearlessly you. It's time to become fearlessly you. This is the most powerful step you can take toward living your best life. Don't worry about what others think. And I think that this is what this person is doing. They're learning to become fearlessly themselves and not be afraid of that. But yeah, if there's any healing that you need to do, definitely, definitely focus on that. But yeah, give and receive love, give love with a generous heart and receive love with an open heart. So, you know, you may be good at giving love, but if you can't receive it, it's a problem, buddy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this reading here, pile four. I know this is a bit shorter, but... Um, I like to switch things up because if I do the same things all the time, I'll go crazy. But uh, I hope you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this resonated. And um, thank you so much for watching my ads. That is the simplest and easiest way to support me. But if you would like to support me in other ways to show your gratitude for this um you can like this video you can comment down below let me know how it resonates you can subscribe if you haven't already and click that little notification bell to be part of my notification squad i do interact with a notification squad much more than after the video is uploaded because life but uh yeah so if you want me to see your comment want me to see you uh become part of the notification squad um I also have social media. Just be careful. There's a lot of scammers impersonating me. Um, so if it's not linked below, it's not mine. Also, I'm not on Facebook. I hate Facebook. I hate so as social media is a necessary evil, but um, yeah, I'm not on Facebook. And I have merch and yeah, I'm sure I have other things, but my brain is blanking and um, I doubt you really care that much. So, uh, with that being said, thank you so much for, um, for being here and for letting me read your cards. Um, I really hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile five. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the fluorite snowflake and the five cent tarot, this is going to be your reading, but to make sure this reading will actually resonate for you, we are going to see the energy of the person that I am channeling and what they think of you. So um, I do just want to remind you that when we are channeling from someone else's perspective, what comes through may not be the objective truth or what is your subjective truth. Um, we're channeling from their subjective truth. So um, if you find that some of it isn't necessarily like accurate from your perspective, remember that it's from their perspective and not yours or objective. I, sometimes I do chime in though and add some objectiveness there, but that's a, it depends. But starting with your person, we have the shapeshifter. We have, I forgive myself for judging the experience of emotions. I would rather not be mine. I choose to believe that when I honor each and every one of my emotional expressions, I discover a deeper wisdom, not accessible through reason alone. We have the earth element with stability. And we have the green man with abundance. I don't know why with green man coming out, but like blue man group could be significant those guys freak me out but you know to each their own um we also have integration the frequency of integration 
supports our embrace of every aspect of ourselves, allowing what we perceive as positive and what we perceive as negative to harmonize in a balanced symphony of life. And then finally, we have fast with play. So this person, uh, I caught myself breathing very heavy there. <laughs> and I think that's because uh, this person kind of embodies Ten of Wands energy. Um, if you don't know what the Ten of Wands means, it, it essentially means being burdened, having, carrying a lot, just kind of trying to get through, get through life, you know, being, uh, being weighed down by the obligations and things of life. Um, and I definitely think that this person has some of those burdens, but I think that this person is realizing that maybe they have put too much uh, pressure on themselves uh, because I, this person is quite impressive. Like they have uh, accumulated a decent amount of financial abundance and stability. It doesn't have to be financial abundance, but I do think that, that I mean, it doesn't have to be like exuberant wealth. It could just be, you know, stability and the ability to, um, you know, have enough to be comfortable. But this person definitely is very focused on cultivating their own abundance. Um, their work could be really, really important to them. Uh, with the stability card here too, they could have uh, earth placements, Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. But I think that this person is constantly surprising you. Like they they evolve all the time or you see new sides of them that you didn't see before. If you're able to see them in different environments, you get to see how they kind of uh, suss out environments. I, I wanted to say like they kind of, like the energy kind of feels Piscean despite um, all the earth energy here. And I think it's just that this person has the ability to read a room really well and like see what's up and they're they're almost good at a subconscious level of like knowing exactly what energy is occurring within a space and knowing how to respond to it in a way that is going to be most favorable to them i do think that they um are uncomfortable with their own emotions and i do think that they use Uh, their work and constantly striving towards maintaining this stability um, as a way to either distract themselves from their emotions or to pretend like they're not there. I think this person has been forcing themselves to play a role that they that they realize that nobody necessarily forced them into. They may have been encouraged there, but they kind of became their own like prison warden in their own prison of who they think that they should be or who they thought that they should be. Because when we go over here to Bast and play and integration, I think this person realizes that they've been like a bit too serious for a while and they've lost a lot of their, well, not lost, but they haven't been tapping into their more playful fun energy and they're realizing that they need a balance of both. I think that this person maybe is experiencing a bit of burnout, um, <laughs> which I guess would kind of make sense with, um, you know, snowflake and things like that. But it's like they, they're recognizing that they don't need to shun parts of themselves that don't fit into this identity of a stable, responsible um, person. And they're realizing that, that they can't just neglect parts of themselves because they feel it's necessary or because they're uncomfortable with how they feel about those parts of themselves. I think that this person, uh, I'm not gonna lie, like my head started hurting as soon as I started reading for this pile. And I think that this person really is, um, quite, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Well, they're blessed. That's what I can say. Um, they are blessed with a lot from the divine. And I think that that is because this is somebody who is a very hard worker 
and somebody who does have honest intentions, but maybe they're just very, very hard on themselves. And they don't really allow themselves to be human at times. It's weird because they have an incredibly practical nature when it comes to how they express themselves, when it comes to how they um, protect and conserve and also gain resources. But they're very irrational towards their own being because I think that, that they there's part of their logical brain that can't like compute the more playful feminine aspects of themselves. And so I think that what's kind of been going on here is through a lot of shadow work and I, and I don't even know if that this person is necessarily like doing the shadow work consciously. I think it's just um, something that's happening through a natural process. They're realizing that they need to have a balance of both their playful fun energy and also this mature responsible energy. This could honestly be anybody. So um, who this is for you, I, I don't know. But I mean, that's up to you. But one thing's for sure is that they, uh, They're not having an identity crisis. They're just dealing with the pain of letting go of roles that they felt safe embodying. But there was also pain in embodying those roles. So I think that this person, above all else, has just been using the earthly world and the material realm as a way to uh, soothe what's going on internally. And I think that um, a lot of what they were suppressing has almost come out full force in a way where they recognize now that they can't just be, you know, super serious, m like money bags person. Like they gotta, they gotta be fun. They gotta give themselves time to be free. They have to allow themselves to be more than just one thing to, to shift shapes, if you will. <laughs> um, but I also think that uh, if, de depending on what this connection is, um, you know, if this person has romantic feelings for you, uh, maybe that's something that they're not quite comfortable with, or maybe they don't even like the idea that they feel attachments to people. This could be somebody with like uh, an avoidant attachment style uh, where they feel like if they've got uh, well, I'm hearing like money by Wonder Girls in my head. So I feel like this person maybe is realizing that material comforts cannot ease the unrest in their soul. And so now they're they're starting to realize, oh, I need to I need to um just I need to also do things that make my soul happy because if I'm even if I look put together by society standards or even if I am stable and put together like my internal I'm seeing like, like, you know, what like old abandoned mine shafts look like and how, you know, there's always those like wood, um, like every, all like those tons of, most of the structures are like made of like rickety wood and like they look like they're, um, broken down and, and just like very shaky and, and like they could just collapse at any moment. And that kind of feels like what this person's internal state is kind of like. Um, but I, truthfully, I don't know if that is a present energy or a past energy. And it's that past energy uh, kind of collapsing underneath them that, that became what made them realize that they needed to integrate more of their, of their soul, of what makes them happy, of what makes them smile. In their life but I do think that this person um, may have almost got gotten addicted to the hustle or the grind for a while um, and I think that they are having to reconcile with that and and heal from that because it's almost like they avoided healing internal issues that they had and then as a result poured all of their energy into making external progress and it's like now they have this external progress and now the universe is like kind of doing a 180 on them where they're like, okay, you did it, buddy, but you're still fragile as hell. So we need you to, we need you to start focusing on your internal body because this is not sustainable. And 
I think that's what they're realizing. And I think that this person carried a lot of shame in the idea of being fragile, but fragility is not a bad thing. I think recognizing your own fragility takes a lot of strength and um, nurturing that fragility and learning how to protect that fragility can also make you a lot stronger. So if this sounds like a person you know, let's see what they think of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I genuinely like this could be anyone, so. We'll see. Spirit, what does this person think of pile five, please? Okay, page of wands in reverse. Okay, we have temperance upright. Uh, one thing that I noticed, um, I'm never usually silent when I'm shuffling. So I feel like this person, uh, they're quiet but not in a way that's like, like I feel like this person can be loud if they want to, but they may be quiet around you or they may not say much around you. We also have the page of pentacles and the ace of cups in reverse. Okay, can we clarify these bad boys please? Spirit? Okay, so we have the empress upright. We have the chariot in reverse. We have the ten of swords in reverse. We have the page of cups in reverse. And we have the two of cups upright. And on the back of the deck, we have the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, there is a work element to this, for sure. For some of you, this could be somebody that you work with. Um, if there's anything steamy going on, I won't tell HR. But, uh... How do they think of you, Pile Five? Um, this is confusing. But also simple and straightforward. Let's just start over here. Um, with the Page of Wands here, I feel like they see your connection as like a fail. And it feels wrong to say that because it, cause it is wrong. It's not... <laughs> That's, that's like I, what I was saying. It's not subjective reality. Um, I think that uh, maybe events within your connection haven't played out the way that this person hoped that they would. And so as a result, they think that they worry that, that they've failed this connection or that they've failed you or that um, this person, like I was saying, this person puts a lot of pressure on themselves. And I think they get really upset and discouraged by like the slightest hiccups in their plans. Um, and with the Empress here, the ironic thing is that the Empress is really grounded to to the planet and, and to, you know, it's, it's just, it's like goes hand in hand with mother nature. And I think part of what you've taught this person or the universe is teaching this person through you. They could see you as the Empress, um, or they could see you as like a creative ideal or an ideal that they um, want to be like or be with. Um, and with and with this creativity here, I think that one thing that they've lost is their ability to go with the flow. And that's something that they're relearning. Like the universe, like one of the things that the universe did to divinely intervene with this person is that they... Um, 
they intentionally put these setbacks uh, within this connection or like intentionally slowed this person down in order to make them more resourceful and more creative. This person has a really hard time going with the flow. And I think that when it comes to your connection, they, this has a little bit of energetically clenched butthole energy or clenched butthole energy. I don't know why I had to add energy twice there, but, um, I think it's only because they care. There's something about this connection that's either volatile in nature or that energetically makes you both, um, triggers you both easily or at least triggers this person easily. Maybe you don't get triggered, but um, this person has had to come to terms with the fact that they can't control you. I think that this person is very intelligent, which is why they have garnered the abundance that they have. And I think that they've realized maybe in the past their actions were either Okay, I'm, I'm actually taking it two ways. So this magician card, they could have felt like you were manipulating them or had fears that you were manipulating them and slash or this person tried to manipulate you in the past or, but it could have been a subconscious manipulation. Like some people are manipulative without even realizing that they're manipulative. You know what I mean? It's just like, doesn't mean it's not manipulative, but it just means that, that they're less cognizant of it. And I think that this person sees you as somebody that they can't control, nor do they want to. I don't think that this person is a control freak in the sense that they just want everyone to bow down to them. But I think that they saw you as a really worthwhile person to have in their life and they became very afraid of what, what would happen if things got messy or got rocky or um, things didn't stay the same way. You know, I think that this person really has, okay, yeah, there's some type of soul connection here. This person could be part of your soul family in some way. Um, but with this with this Eight of Pentacles card, it's like this person has has invested so much of their energy into just what they can control to the point where it's given them the time, it's given the universe the time and space to iron out wrinkles in this connection. Um, I do feel like there was an ending of some kind. And I do think that is partially what inspired this person to be more, to do more. I think this person recognizes that um, either you both were immature or... They may be envious of you in certain ways. Like they may, like for example, um, if they see you as somebody that is just able to be free and have fun and just, you know, go buck wild sometimes, you know, maybe they're jealous of the fact that they don't feel the same, that they have a hard time releasing inhibitions like that. I do think that this person wants to manifest some sort of solid foundation here or wants to invest more. Like I almost feel like their motivation because we do have the two of cups and the ace of cups here. So if this is a romantic interest, I think that part of this person's motivation um, for working so hard is one, to build more, to build themselves up, but two, to prove to you that there's somebody that you can trust because maybe they're worried that you think that they're manipulative um or maybe they're worried that it's almost like this person is really bad at like 
handling uncomfortable emotions in general. I think that this person, maybe they rejected you or you rejected them. If you rejected them, then I think that they're very grateful for that because you help them come into balance with themselves. And no matter what happened here, it's like this person recognizes that you have had a positive impact in their life where you've shown them that they are capable of connecting with others. You've shown them that they that they can that they can heal, that they can grow, that they can evolve. I think that this person is realizing that maybe they were too stubborn in the past. But I think, because this, this reading, I'm not going to lie, is kind of confusing me because I'm having a hard time pinpointing what is their energy directed at themselves and what is their energy directed at you. But the vibe that I'm getting is that I think that this person likes to have a, a clear-cut truth, a clear-cut um, understanding of things. You know, earth energy is very much like if I can't see it with my own two eyes or if I can't be, if I can't build with it, if I can't, if it's not something that you can sense in a material way, it's less valuable or, or less understood by this person. And the fact that we have the beyond here, which represents the soul, um, I think that this person sees you as somebody that has proof to them that there's more to life than just what is seen by the naked eye. Um, yeah, because this person is kind of a control freak with peace and love. Um, maybe they see you that way as well though. Maybe you're two control freaks or um, two avoidants who just try to focus on themselves and be super independent and not need anyone. Uh, but I think you're a partial motivation for why this person works so hard. And they feel a deep resonance with you that they don't understand. And I think that I think that they felt originally um, the energy between the two of you. Because it was foreign to them, I think that they may have taken it as you being manipulative or you being um, almost like, like I just heard witchcraft in my head. Like this person may have thought you did like witchcraft on them or something, which I mean, you, you could have, but um, I think I think you showed this person that they that they are, weren't as put together as they thought that they were, and you kind of lit a fire under their ass in a way. I think you've made this person slow down a little bit and and chill out and recognize where maybe they were manipulating themselves. It's interesting because we have unfocused and we have focus here, and. <laughs> Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, they, I think you both are hard workers, if I'm being honest. But they see your connection as something worth investing in, and they're incredibly patient to, to allow it to unfold as it will, um, which Earth is all about that. It's about allowing things to unfold as they will. I think this person is realizing that maybe they unfairly judged you in the past and that maybe they um, and that maybe they projected their own fears of of intimacy onto you. And maybe you had those as well and you projected those onto them. But I think that this person is realizing that they were really unfair to you in some way. Like, like they wrote you off without giving you a, more of a chance to show yourself. It's like this person assumed who you were and then was too stuck in their own assumptions to be open-minded about who you actually are. But I think this person is realizing that they, that they want to connect with you on a deeper level. Um, or at the very least, if 
you and this person are not in each other's lives and not interested in being in each other's lives, then I think that, that this person gives you credit for um, helping them love themselves more and, and showing them showing them where they were being pigheaded and being stubborn and being unfair. And I think that this person is rising above their old tactics towards getting what they want. And they're realizing that being honest and, and hardworking and being patient and allowing things to unfold rather than trying to force something to happen is much more aligned with what is good for them and, and good for everyone uh, than them just trying to control everything. But they may see you as somebody, like they may have, they may be slightly fearful of you because they can't control you, you know what I mean? Um, this deck is so interesting. Like the energy that I get, and the messages that I get from it are always it just the energy in this pile feels weird not weird in like a bad way just weird in a different way and I think that that is kind of what the connection between the two of you feels like I think that neither of you really have um have or had the tools to navigate a connection like this and I think as a result um, there was a lot of complications, miscommunications, hurt feelings, or um, just plain like confusion and like what happened here. But I think this person is realizing that they were so stuck in survival mode that they were like needlessly breaking people down in order to keep themselves safe. And so they're trying to rise above that now. But I think this person is always is also realizing that like, you know, maybe you both were too immature to like really show up in a way that is kind and mature. But I think they're kind of just allowing nature to take its course and are very accepting with how things have happened. I think they placed a lot of blame on them on themselves, but they're trying to trust that there's a deeper reason for why that is and and take the lessons as they come. This is somebody that has definitely been humbled in a way that that was very much needed. But They're still incredibly hard on themselves and still incredibly uncertain. There's definitely a uniqueness to the way that you two connect um, in whatever way that may be that this person doesn't want to let go of. And I think that at first, the way that you two connect was too much for them. Like having this very earthly, earthly, like, outer presence and outer experience kind of served as like a barrier to their true self and I think that you kind of broke through that or or saw through it and that was what made them kind of just like shut you out or shut you down. I think they realized maybe this person was used to like manipulating people just to get what they want, just to to um, advance their own means and their own desires. And I think they realized how immature that was and that um, they may have missed out on a good thing or that they may have um, not appreciated what they had until it was too late or they may have realized that they'd just been unfair to you in some way. This person wants reciprocity with you, 
I think the scary thing is that because of the volatility of this connection, and I don't, and I don't mean volatility in the sense of like you both are volatile people. I mean volatility in the sense of like how easily one or both of you could be spooked by something negative happening or by something bad happening. Um, I do think that there is an unseen force that connects the two of you. Um, that this person fears and may project this unseen force to come from you. And I think that this person is slowly but surely realizing that, um, that that was something very unfair that they did to you and that that wasn't you at all. It was just the universe. And um, I think this is a classic case of projecting your own insecurities and your own fears uh, onto somebody else and blaming them for what you're feeling when in reality the universe was just using you as a catalyst to trigger them and force them to go to go deeper into themselves but in terms of what they truly think of you they're keeping things really close to the chest like even with the ace of cups and the two of cups here like this person doesn't want to fully say like oh yeah like i'm like i want something more here because i mean well for some of you this I mean, I think the two of cups, like in in this instance, really, it's not just romantic. It's it's just the fact that the two of you like vibe really hard, <laughs> like Phineas and Ferb, or um, SpongeBob and Patrick, or I don't know. There's so, kind of some Shinji Asuka energy though. So like. It, it's like, yeah, I mean, maybe the first two were too simple. Because um, cause there is tension here. But, like, when things are good and when you're not being triggered by one another, it is very harmonious and flowing. But, like, I think you both just have different ways of coping, different ways of viewing the world. And this person, I think, hasn't admitted them to themselves your importance in their life and so the way that they think of you is something that like the universe honestly doesn't want you to be concerned about like at least not right now because I think the more that they they just channel this energy and and um shift through it the more that they realize that like they were wrong and that's that's their that's their path to take not yours to show so we're gonna go ahead and finish off with some advice uh because ooh, okay so i just got the deck your career holds an exciting positive energy around it right now expect miracles but we're just going to finish this off with some advice uh and see what the spirit wants to say to you uh this may have nothing to do with this person um so just be aware of that uh this deck always comes through with like really confusing energies and i'm here for it it's challenging um so sorry if i couldn't really get too deeply this person is has kind of a smoke and mirrors energy where like they do kind of have this magician energy in reverse and it, it feels like they may have projected that onto you but it's like they don't want you to see the truth they don't want me to see the truth and in turn you see the truth because i think that there is still a part of them that is very prideful and very um very ashamed of how they go about things but your influence in their life has helped them recognize that, 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 that that's not a way to treat people. It's not a way to be. Um, and they're rising above that. So, okay, Spirit, what advice do you have for Pile 5 um, in general? Okay, so let's start with this one. You're protected. It's go time. You're currently being protected. The universe has your best interests at heart. Move forward fearlessly and have courage. 
We have new beginnings. An exciting shift is on its way. A new job, project, promotion, or home is in the works. And finally, we have your glowing. You're glowing from the inside out, so choose to feel good about yourself. You will only attract positive people, circumstances, and opportunities by doing so. I want to take the top and the bottom. So yeah, enjoy the process. It's time to stop and enjoy the present. Your future is being taken care of by the universe. <laughs> And on the back of the deck, we have divine timing. Everything will make sense soon. Trust that the timing of your life is being taken care of by your angels in the universe. Yeah, so essentially what I was saying is I, I think I was being a little stubborn and uh, wanting to interpret even when the universe was telling me like, hey, you don't even need to, you don't need to dig into this that hard. It's not gonna, it's not gonna come to anything. And so I think that's a message for you guys. Like if you're trying to figure this person out, trying to figure this situation out, spirit's really asking you to chill the fuck out, like with peace and love. Because like it's not, it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with this person's process. And also I think it may be wasting your own mental time and energy that you could be investing towards yourself. And um, you're already doing so amazing. I feel like this, the universe is saying like, do not allow the energy of this person to compromise your good mood or your good day or your beliefs in yourself. So pile five, I am going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. And thank you so much for watching my ads. That is the simplest and easiest way to support me. But if you'd like to support me in other ways, you can like this video, you can comment down below, let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe and click that little notification bell if you want to be part of my notification squad. If you want me to see your comment or uh, respond to you, that is the most likely time that I will. Uh, I also have merch, which is linked below, as well as um, my social medias. Uh, do be aware, though, that I have a lot of scammers pretending to be me. So um, if you get a, a DM from someone claiming to be me, asking you for a personal reading, it's not me. I'm not offering personal readings at this time. And uh, yeah, I have like 15,000 unread emails. Like I just, 60 unread text messages. Like I got tons of shit to do like with peace and love. I wish I could be doing personal readings. Um, I do not have the time and energy that scammers do to be dickwads, but that's all I have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this reading resonated. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. And I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile6. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Free Light Heart and the Star Power Tarot, this is going to be your reading. Now, to make sure this actually is your reading, uh, we are going to see the energy of the person that we are channeling. So do be aware that when we are channeling from someone else's perspective, we're channeling from their subjective reality and not a, uh, the objective reality. Which, to be fair, you're interpreting this from your subjective reality. So... Um, if things feel off um, or you feel like things could be flip-flopped, be aware of it. That could be projections of some kind or, yeah, things of that nature. So to start with this person, we have the bridge. Bridges of Madison County could be a significant movie, but um, I forgive myself for holding on to habits that no longer serve me. I choose to believe that when I set the intention to have compassion for my emotional experience, I will find that I am able to more effort effortlessly engage in behaviors that better support me. We have Sagittarius with IC. And we have the Jade Emperor with Organization. We have Coherence. The frequency of coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for an optimal ability to create the reality that we desire. And finally, we have Amaterasu with self-esteem. So yeah, this person has a lot of fire energy. Um, I'm not I'm not shocked that like they would come through in the star power tarot. Um, Amaterasu, she's the um, sun goddess in, uh, is it the Shinto religion? Um, so, okay, so this person could be Asian because we have Chinese energy with the Jade Emperor. He comes from, I believe, Tao, Taoism. Um, and yeah, Amaterasu is Japanese. So um, Asia could be significant, East Asia could be significant, or um, one or both of you could be Asian. But uh, 
this person is definitely like somebody that that uh is an idealist and an optimist and very intelligent i think this person in in your life serves as um a connection that is genuine like you may be the type of person who feels isolated a lot and and this person no matter what your connection to them is is always there to remind you that you're not alone and like even if you haven't talked to this person in a while like they you two are the type of people that can just pick back up where you left off um i do think that this person struggles with their self-esteem and i do think that they are the type of person to give more than they receive and i think that's something that they're healing but they definitely have times of retreat where uh they just have to kind of disappear from the world and heal with the uh, jade emperor being there though i feel like it's those times of retreat that allow them to come back out and be just a force to be reckoned with like i feel like they retreat just so that they can maintain their energy and and get where they need to be and when they come back out they always come back out stronger than they were before i do think that this person is trying to um make shifts within their life so whether that is like moving or remodeling a house is something i just heard or like maybe maybe for some of you this person is like a contractor or something or like works with her hands in some way but this is somebody who values you in general um, as like a trusted confidant. And I think that you encourage this person or help this person connect to their heart space as well as their mind because I think maybe what you both connect on is the fact that you see the world in similar ways and in different ways, but in similar enough ways that it, it feels like the the differences in your perspective don't tear one another's viewpoint down they just add to what the two of you are already seeing on your own i do feel like this person is a bit protective of you but not in like a an outward way that you would know about it's more just like a an inward way where they they worry about you sometimes they hope that you're okay um but i think that this person also is is their own worst enemy sometimes and i also think that their that their nature uh, tends to attract shitty people that kind of tear them down and, and force them into these modes of retreat not that they're literally like forcing this person to retreat but they force this person has no choice but to like kind of retreat from the world and gather their bearings because if they don't they will like <laughs> rip someone's hat off you know what i mean I think that this person is very ambitious and very, very concerned with um, their own spiritual development as well as the spiritual development of others. I feel like they, they constantly want to be pushing boundaries and pushing what the, what the world believes is possible. I do think that they have a hard time though letting go of maladaptive coping mechanisms that they know don't serve them but but bring a lot of comfort to them this person has a special emphasis when it comes to you where they never want to be disrespectful like this is somebody who is like only interacts with you if it's genuine and and sincere like if this person was having a really shitty day they probably wouldn't respond to you or or talk to you because they wouldn't want to say something that would ac accidentally hurt your feelings i think this person sees um a part of themselves in you that they want to cherish um this could be an international connection of some kind obviously with like the bridge and water um but this person like always feels connected to you.
I think that they can sometimes get caught up, so caught up in their own perspective though, that they can hurt others. And so I think that there's an awareness of that where in an attempt to protect you from them, they may retreat until they're ready to act correctly again in their mind. I don't, I don't mean like in general, but overall, this is somebody that has a lot of responsibility on their shoulders, but they wouldn't have it any other way. Like they, they can't just, I, I heard in my head freeloader, but like, I don't know. I don't think that's a very nice term. Um, this is somebody who has a hard time doing nothing, I guess is what I could say. They're very go, go, go. They have a lot of energy and they shine really brightly, but I think it's easy sometimes, um, for them to get weighed down by the world and really frustrated and, um, that light kind of dims for a little while, but it always comes back and brighter than it has before. Like, you know, you see this candle, he's like, you know, just, just barely chugging along. And then we have <laughs> Senor Flame over here, just like going insane. So, you know, I think it's kind of this person has this balance between this energy and that energy and they, and they have to kind of work to balance it so that it's even, but, um, there's a lot of respect for you, a lot of respect for your mind and a lot of respect for um, the connection that you two have cultivated, whatever type of connection that may be. Like this person really respects you and values you as a human and also just as a, as a confidant, like I already said. So let's go ahead and see what this person thinks of you. So we are using the Star Power Tarot. So this person could be a star seed or maybe you both are star seeds or like kind of resonate with that. Um, I do think that there's, you both are pretty cosmic in nature. And so that's partially why um, there's kind of that effortless connection there. It's almost like you two can see color. Like if, if the entire world could only see in black and white, it's like you and this person see color and, and, you take refuge in that because it's like you know your experience is real but it's constantly invalidated by the people around you because they don't get to under they don't get to see what life is like from your shoes that makes sense I'll give these one more good shuffle and then we will see what they think of you so, Spirit, what does um, this person think of Pile 6, please? What do they think of Pile 6? Okay. Okay, so we have the Three of Swords in reverse. We have the Hermit Upright. We have the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Five of Swords in reverse. And we have the Knight of Wands in reverse. I just heard in my head, you've been hurt by my kind before, whatever that means. Um, and, and that was coming from this person's perspective. So when they said you, they meant you and my kind, they meant their kind. Um, is that a douchebag? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So we have the Magician clarifying the Three of Swords. We have the Queen of Wands clarifying the Hermit. We have the Four of Swords in reverse clarified by the clarifying the Wheel of Fortune. How about the Five of Swords in reverse? Okay. So clarifying the Five of Swords, we have Strength and Clarifying the Knight of Wands in reverse, we have the Two of Swords with the King of Swords. Okay, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and on the back of the deck, we have, yeah, we have the Hanged Man in reverse. So yeah, this person is learning a lot of lessons right now that don't really have anything to do with you, but they circle back um, in ways that they understand your connection better. Yeah. 
Um, this person is learning to be more collaborative and to be more, but to also like stand in their power more. They, they have this live and let live mentality, but that's like with an asterisk, like it was for some people it's live and let live. For others, if, if they're bothered by what they do or if they're bothered by their perspective, then this person may like internally upset themselves over it. But in terms of how they see you, they see you as somebody who has cultivated a lot from dragging yourself out of the pits of hell is what I just heard. So that's pretty intense. Um, but this person sees you as somebody very powerful. I think they look at you as more delicate and fragile than you really are. But I also know that they see you as somebody like not to fuck with. I do think that this person worries that they come off as somebody that is like, a, like I was saying earlier, kind of douchey. Um, but that's not their intent. They recognize that like, they may feel like you sleep on them or they may recognize that like they have issues with self-esteem that impact their ability to maybe invest more energy into this connection. This person is definitely a free spirit and they may see you as somebody who's very similar to them in that way where like maybe you get burnout as well but you are incredibly wise and they really admire your tenacity to keep going like I don't think you retreat in the same way that this person does like when this person retreats like you like they may as well be in Mordor like you, you know like they're they're off good luck finding them but I, it seems like when you're in hermit mode you still have room and space for other people almost to the point of your detriment and i feel like this person hasn't said that to you but if they would if they would give you one piece of advice they would tell you that you need to be more discerning about who you give your energy to because it's almost like your hermit modes are less effective because you're not fully hermiting you know what i mean they can tell too at times that you get really bogged down by the energy of the world. And it's like, sometimes maybe you just want to retreat and, and, and like end it all, not in like a, end it all in the sense of just like end the incoming barrage of like stimuli towards you to the point where it's like overwhelming. They see where you, you, even if you're running on fumes, you somehow pull it out of your ass to like deliver really either really amazing things or really amazing work or or you find the ability to hold space for somebody even if like the end is full, you know what I mean? Like they've also seen you mature. They're really proud of how far you've come. They feel like they, then this is a feeling, not a thought, but they, they do feel like the universe brought you into their life for a reason. They feel like you're, they were destined to meet you, that they, that, that you were destined to be a part of their path. And I feel like they're glad that they didn't sleep on this connection in the sense of like, not putting themselves out there with you or not even opening themselves up to communicating with you. This person may feel like they manifested you after some sort of heartbreak. They feel like there's a lot of similarities between the two of you where like you're two sides of the same coin. But there is an awareness within them that like if you two are not careful the energy within your connection can become problematic, not from the standpoint of like 
you two just like being problematic towards one another but just from the standpoint of like if you both are neglecting yourselves and then you're frustrated you may take take that energy out on one another and so I do think that this person like If they're older than you, I think that they may at times want to be more snippy with you, but they recognize that like that's not going to solve anything and their compassion for you is stronger than any minor annoyance they may have from like a disagreement and a statement that you said. Um, they recognize that you're somebody that You live life on your own accord and like they <laughs> court <laughs> I don't know why I didn't notice that earlier but there's this dual nature to you that's like really fascinating to them you're still a mystery to them if I'm being honest and sometimes they wonder how you can be so uncertain of yourself when you're so intelligent but I think you wonder the same thing about this person so I think it's tit for tat but they definitely feel like you are a force to be reckoned with and your tolerance for bullshit has decreased dramatically and I think they're very happy to see that. Like they're very happy to recognize that, to see that like you're not, you're not going to invest energy in things that just cause you to suffer. And... I think that no matter what type of connection this is or what happens between the two of you, I think this person is invested in your growth, invested in um, in what you're doing. They may feel like you don't rest enough and they may feel like that you need to rest more, that maybe you're too self-sacrificing, but they recognize where it comes from because they have the same energy within themselves. and. They have a lot of hope in terms of both of your ability to heal the world of pain. I don't know, are there some doctors in the house or some nurses? Um, some CMAs, some EMTs. Uh, more than anything though, I think that they just, they feel very protective of your creative spark. Like they don't want to see you lose that because it's it's part of what makes you you. And I think that it's something that this person has lost before and they don't want to you to lose it. Um, I do think that they, they see you sometimes as a little bit reckless and a little bit um, chaotic, but they don't really judge that because this person has that nature as well. They wish you were more confident in yourself though. And they wish you believed in yourself as much as they do. Because you really do have the ability to cultivate anything you desire. I mean, that's why they see you as the magician. But um, it's not their job to show you that. It's, it's your job to see it on your own and I think they're aware of that. They're more so just in this energy of, I'm gonna support pile six because um, I care about them. I think this is a genuine heart connection where like for example if this is a friend or like I just heard cousin you know this is somebody who will be straight up with you and be honest with you and um, will always want the best for you but they're not gonna like do your healing for you you know what I mean the same way they wouldn't expect you to do that for them I do think though that they, they, they feel like you do need to rest more though. Like that's coming through again. Like you need to rest more. Um, because you may inadvertently create more pain for yourself by not taking the time that you need to slow down. And you may unintentionally create more harm that way. But They see you as a mystical, magical person and they wouldn't change meeting you or knowing you for the world. And I think that they are just always, they're impressed by your bravery. They're impressed by 
your tenacity, by your grit, by your character. And overall, I think they have a very high opinion of you. They just wish you had a higher opinion of yourself. And maybe you feel the same way about this person. So that's what they think of you. So let's go ahead and uh, finish this reading off with some advice. This may have nothing to do with this person, or it could. Uh, we'll just have to see what comes out. So Spirit, what advice do you have for Pile 6? Gratitude. Showing gratitude will make room for what you want to effortlessly materialize in your life. Be proud. You should be so incredibly proud of yourself and what you have achieved. Reward yourself. We also have empathize. Instead of judging or gossiping, empathize with this person. Try to see their point of view. Choose to only see through love. And actually, I want to take what's on the top of the deck. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't waste your precious energy worrying about the small things. Refocus your thoughts towards love, abundance, and tranquility. And on the back of the deck, we have coincidences. Take note of the coincidences which are occurring around you right now. The universe is trying to have a say in your life. So pile six, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Um, and thank you so much for watching my ads. That is the simplest and easiest way to support me um, and to show me appreciation for what I do. So if you do that, thank you. Um, but if you'd like to support me in other ways, you could like this video, you can comment down below, let me know how it resonates. You can subscribe and click that little notification bell to be part of my notification squad. If you are part of the squad, you are more likely to hear from me and you are, I will am more likely to see your comment. Um, if you want to support me in other ways, uh, I've got merch linked below, social media linked below. Do be aware though, I have tons of scammers pretending to be me. I'm not on Facebook and, um, well, I technically am on Facebook, but I don't, but it, it's just so that my Instagram account has a, like, has a, a backup in the event that scammers fuck with my shit again and get my account taken down for impersonating myself. Oh, it doesn't fill me with rage at all. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have. Thank you guys so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. I know this is a bit different, but I got to switch things up. Otherwise, I'll go crazy. So um, I hope that it helped and I hope that it benefited in some way. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. And I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye.